BBC Five Live, the home of Formula One. Max Verstappen back on top in Formula One, wins the Japanese Grand Prix. The car just got better and better from me tried the race. Couldn't have been any better. Ferrari just couldn't challenge the reigning champions this time around. Next up, Formula One heads to China for the first time in four years. Shanghai International Circuit. This morning from eight. Listen to live coverage of every lap on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Five Live, the home of Formula One, and as if to prove it, right now, uh, I'm going to say farewell. It's a shorter Sunday breakfast today. Normal service will resume next weekend. Colin Murray, by the way, still here with you from 10 o'clock this morning. Then all the action in the FA Cup and the Premier League from 12.30 on Five Live Sport. Before then, though, we need to go to China. The Chinese Grand Prix and Jenny Gao keeping you company. Morning, Jenny. Good morning. I feel like we should invite you to be part of our team. That would be nice, wouldn't <laughs> I'd, it? You I'd could... happily be involved, Jenny. Stand by our side. I'd, I'd have, have a go at commentary. Have virtually nothing useful to say, but just <laughs> pop up with rubbish every now and again. Yeah, a why bit like not? Me then. <laughs> Perfect. Come on, come have on. Have a good day, won't yeah, you? Thank anyway, you. and we will bring you all of the coverage from China. It's been five years since F1 were last there, and. I think everyone is excited to see what unfolds. We've got a Chinese driver out there. Obviously, Verstappen is on pole position because that's the order of things this year. But Harry Benjamin alongside me as our F1 commentator. Um, I think it's been much awaited, hasn't it, this return um, back to China. I'm not sure excited is the right word to describe it, but the, the grandstands by the start-finish line are full. Everyone's got into the... Uh, I think the... The idea of F1 being back. I absolutely, I agree. Look, the grandstands are absolutely packed out. This time around, there's a home uh, driver to support as well. Joe Guan Yu in Sauber becomes uh, not only, it was the only first Chinese uh, driver to, to start a Formula One race, and now will finally get a home race in his uh, season. He does start down the grid, though, uh, in 16th. Uh, it is nice to, to have it back. It's been an interesting weekend. It's the first of the sprint events this year, which has jumbled up the order slightly. We've had all the sprint qualifying and the sprint race in the last couple of days. We had a bit of rain on the Friday as well, which caused some havoc. But the main thing about this track at the moment is that uh, the grip levels just seem to almost be non-existent at times. And that is the thing that's going to maybe uh, cause a little bit of carnage in the middle of the pack as we get to grips in the early stages of this race, along with tyre degradation as well. So that, I suppose, is the little bit of jeopardy that we're looking at. But past the win for Max Verstappen, clean and clinical is what we've been saying all weekend, imperious. He just doesn't put a foot wrong and you cannot fault him for it. Yeah, he leads the championship now with 85 points, 15 ahead of Sergio Perez and then Charles Leclerc on 64. Alongside me is Sam Bird, Formula E driver for McLaren. No contest in who you're going to be cheering on today, or are you? Are you? Have you left your McLaren hat at the door? No, the McLaren hat is still firmly on. So Look, even course, I've got a McLaren pen well, that, today. That's, well, that's great. You know, at least we're both on point then. But um, no, I'm I'm very excited about this one getting going. Um, the grip level out there in Shanghai is very low. I've got to say, watching drivers on their reconnaissance laps to the grid, we saw Lewis Hamilton have a big lock up and, and actually run off the track at turn six. We saw Lando Norris have a double front tire lock up going into turn 14 at the end of the long straight, the big stop hairpin. People are going to be struggling out there. Tire deg will be interesting as well. Sprint format weekends, there's less tire data that has been collected. So we don't really know what the hard compounds going to be doing what the tyre life is like. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, drivers just getting their last and final preparations done. They're putting their earbuds, earplugs in, doing up their race suits. They'll get into their cars very shortly. Let's hear from the people on the front row of the grid, the Red Bull duo of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez, speaking to Will Buxton. Max, a phenomenal weekend so far for you here. How much are you loving this circuit? Yeah, just you know, really uh, great to uh, to be back here. It's it's an amazing track, a lot of fun to drive, and uh, yeah, definitely. Um, yesterday was a great day, so hopefully, of course, uh, we can do uh, something similar today. 
your pace yesterday over the rest of the field was ominous. I imagine you have significantly improved the car in the gap between the sprint and qualify. And how worried should your opponents be today? Well, I think everyone learned a lot. I think from from yesterday, so I don't I don't expect it to be like yesterday. Uh, from my side, yeah, uh, the wind of course is a bit different today, so I just need to understand that, and then of course just try to do my uh, my own race. And Checo, um, I think one of the biggest cheers for you of the year here outside of Mexico, a huge fan base. How amazing is it to have these incredible fans here supporting you this weekend, so far from home? Yeah, it's been incredible. It's been amazing. Um, really happy to be back here after so many years that we didn't race. So, um, yeah, looking forward to put a good show for the for the fans, which they deserve a lot. And I think it's going to be an entertainment race, you know, with the degradation that we saw yesterday. I think it's going to be a, a good race for the fans. Can anyone touch you guys this weekend? Hopefully not, but uh, you never know. It's a race day and uh, a lot of people will learn from what they've done yesterday. So I, I assume that they will be able to, to improve and have a stronger pace today. Sam, will Perez go for it with Max Verstappen off the line? Oh, um, I'm not sure. I really don't know. Um, because I think even if Sergio does get into the lead on lap one it's only a matter of time before Max Verstappen would retake the lead so I don't think it's that much of a jeopardy the only the only jeopardy would be I think is if Sergio were to go down the inside have an issue lock up with the with the low grip conditions and then both of them have a bit of an issue and and are coming together which would obviously make the race quite entertaining we've seen it haven't we this weekend already that if you take the wrong line off the start with Norris and Hamilton in the sprint that could be disastrous Harry yeah you took the words right out of my mouth that's exactly what happened Norris was P1 for the sprint Hamilton in P2 Hamilton actually got the better start was on the inside line going through that long arcing right hander of turn one and edged Norris out wide and, and Norris ran out of room had to take to the runoff area and there is no grip out there is this and, and then you, you're just squabbling and you, and you plummet to the back well it wasn't so much that he he ran out of room it's just that that corner it's a tightening radius corner now he's tried to brave it around the outside he didn't get anywhere near as much of an overlap as what he wanted on Hamilton to then get the inside line for turn and two and with throttle inputs going on off on off basically that's put the car into a bit of a pitch and while then continuing to turn and turn more that's then sent the rear into a little bit of a bad moment uh, if we look at the second row of this grid it's fernando alonso renewed his contract with aston martin earlier this week so he's not going anywhere and uh, lando norris piastri behind them in leclerc and science and russell that could be an interesting fight we saw alonso yesterday slipping backwards in the sprint race can he hold on well, if anyone can hold on, it's Fernando Alonso, isn't it? Hey, that was a, a fantastic battle in the sprint over that P3 spot. In the end, what did it for Fernando Alonso was contact with Carlos Sainz, wheel-to-wheel uh, -wheel contact, and that gave Fernando Alonso a puncture, and then he had to come in and eventually retired from the race. But you're right, that could be a, a fierce battle. Look, it's Alonso's best qualifying, best start of the year so far. He'll have a fast-charging Norris behind. He would have learnt a lot from yesterday, starting from that P1 position in the sprint. But the two Ferraris, Leclerc and Sainz in sixth and seventh. They've both said uh, we expected, we actually expected more from them in qualifying to be ahead of the McLarens, but they've gone for a setup which favours them more so for the race. So they're going to be ones to watch coming through the pack because I think we're all expecting at least, well, one Ferrari, not sure which one, to be on that podium come the end of 56 laps. 60,000 fans have poured into the Shanghai International Circuit to watch this race after a five year absence. Most of them. I think, a bedecked with uh, McLaren or Ferrari outfits. They seem to be really cheering on those that battle for second. Well, those two manufacturers, obviously, and Joe Guan Yu, the home favourite, who's had an enormous amount of support this weekend. I know who I'm cheering for, Jenny, but, uh, you know, being completely impartial on this one. About three, about three Bottas, wasn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. So I made a prediction yesterday, everybody, that Valtteri Bottas would make the top ten and got it right. Got it right. Sam is currently sitting here uh, dressed in a, one of the banana suits that Charles Leclerc made so famous in uh, lockdown when he was on his gaming suit. 
I, I'm firstly, lying that's now. a lie. <laughs> Secondly, I'm in green to support um, Salva. 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 green, clearly, isn't it? Clearly. I love that. Well, let's talk about um, Zhou Guan Yu. He will be racing in front of his nation. And this is an important moment from here, uh, for him. He's been speaking to Will Buxton. From the grandstand to the grid, uh, your boyhood dreams come true today. How are your emotions? How are you keeping it all in check? Uh, firstly, hello Shanghai, hello Zhongguo, you uh, It's amazing to see the crowd, it's amazing to be here. Of course, the, after a few years been missing home Grand Prix, I'm just really glad I'm still here and try to give it everything I have on the on track and uh, yeah, I drive my heart out so far this weekend. Obviously starting a bit further back than I wanted, but uh, I'm going to ice forward and move up. Could you ever have believed the first time you came here and stood in those stands that you would be here about to take part in the Grand Prix of China? Yeah, 2004 I was here uh, before Turn 1 also. Just watching the race, dream to be F1 driver in the future and uh, 20 years later we're here. So. It's been a long journey with a mix of emotions, but uh, I'm just really happy that uh, finally I can start my first very Grand Prix back home. Yeah, it's so nice for him to actually be able to go out there and perform in front of his home nation. And as he said, he just about held on in time. Oh, did you hear the roar from the fans? I mean, that, what were you that, support, that, that support must be so amazing. I mean, look, it's been, it's been a, a tough qualifying. He actually had a good sprint yesterday, uh, did Joe. Didn't get any points for it, but finished uh, inside the top 10. Uh, look, Joe is one of the drivers that is at risk of losing his seat come the end of this season. So uh, we, I think everyone hopes that he has a good run. Salva are struggling in their pit stop areas at the moment, hoping uh, they will find a permanent fix to that but not until Imola so it's a bit of a wait and see come the race so uh, but Joe Guan you fantastic and Sam will know what it's like better to race in front of your home crowd absolutely it's slightly different we have incredible fans in the UK um, and all around Europe and, and pretty much the world with it's recognized as a big sport in the UK but for for Joe Guan Yu to be the very first on the grid here in Shanghai it, it's enormous for him and he does carry a lot of weight on those young shoulders that's but having that roar from the crowd he will probably only experience that kind of roar here the likes of Lewis Hamilton Max Verstappen they get that everywhere but for Joe that would have been a very special moment yeah absolutely Hamilton will give us some excitement though won't he he's starting P18 and yeah he locked up in qualifying it wasn't his best moment Sam but what what can you do you just have to go out there and have a bit of fun as he says yeah it's unlike Lewis to, to make mistakes he's normally pretty mistake free being one of the best drivers of all time but look he's out of position he starts 18th it'll make it interesting for us here in in commentary to watch him work his way forwards I still think he'll score some points today how many I don't know hashtag BBC F1 if you want to get involved obviously we've got the marathon Thing. We've got the FA Cup semi-final today as well. Lots of Premier League football. Um, if Sam, if you're a betting man, which you are now, because I'm putting you on your spot, where will Hamilton finish? I'm, I'm going to say he's going to finish ninth today. We've just seen Max Verstappen reporting on the radio that there might be a little bit of drizzle mm, in the air. Things are getting tasty. Uh, Harry, where will Hamilton finish in your mind? P9. P9. Right, get in touch, let us know on um, social media where you think Hamilton, how far up he will manage to make it. Got about a minute to go until the race starts. People now putting on their gloves, getting themselves ready, doing their final preparations. Harry, I'll hand it over to you for the Chinese Grand Prix round five of the Formula One World Championship. Thank you very much, Jenny. Yeah, Max Verstappen just reporting on the radio or being told on the radio that there might be some drizzle in these early stages. The official numbers are that there is a 10% chance of rain, but obviously that means there is a 90% chance that it might not happen. But Formula One is back in China for the first time since 2019. Last time we were here, Max Verstappen wasn't a champion. Lewis Hamilton was a six-time world champion. Fernando Alonso was retired. Now, 
A lot of things have changed and we even have a Chinese driver on the grid for the very first time to make a start to this Chinese Grand Prix in the form of Joe Guan Yu. We celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Chinese Grand Prix, the 17th time we have been here. Ahead of us will be 56 laps of hard fought racing. It's time for the Chinese Grand Prix. the grid looks then his fifth pole of the season Max Verstappen heads the field alongside him his teammate Sergio Perez Fernando Alonso's best qualifying of the year goes from third in the Aston Martin in front of the two McLarens Norris and Piastri round out the top five the two Ferraris are sixth and seventh Leclerc ahead of Sainz Russell Hulkenberg and Bottas round out the top ten in 11th it's Lance Stroll Daniel Ricciardo is 12th in front of Ocon Albon and Gasly the top 15 Joe Guan Yu starts his home race from 16th on the grid in front of Kevin Magnussen. Lewis Hamilton with work to do in his Mercedes starts down in 18th in front of Yuki Tsunoda and the Williams of Logan Sargent goes from the pit lane. Formation lap underway there. The McLaren Formula E driver Sam Bird is alongside me. Sam, what is happening on this formation lap now? What are the 20 drivers putting themselves through as we gear up? So all the, the drivers, grid? all the drivers right now will be working on getting their tires and brakes in the best possible window. You see Max Verstappen weaving around furiously there. Lateral G-force is just as important as longitudinal G-force when it comes to getting the heat correctly in the tire. We see 15 of the 20 drivers have opted for the medium compound tyre, the likes of Lance Stroll, Lewis Hamilton, Yuki Sonoda and Logan Sargent have opted for the soft tyre and the one driver on the hard compound for the start is Kevin Magnussen. Thank you very much. Jenny Gao also joins us. Uh, Jenny weaving left and right down that back straight. Uh, we're hoping that there might be some overtakes uh, compared to the sprint. Oh, yeah, I think so. The sprint race gives you no strategy calls, whereas this one gives us plenty. We're expecting a two-stop strategy race. About 20 seconds for a pit stop. Um, coming in, stop, going out. Um, about 50 if you're Salva. <laughs> we'll wait and see, fingers crossed for the Sauber team who have been struggling with their pit, st pit stops, will not issues in the pits. Uh, Valtteri Bottas in that Sauber who starts in the top 10 said last time out in Japan he was on course for a points finish, feels the pit stop cost him. Uh, as the cars then come on to the grid uh, elsewhere on BBC Radio 5 Live this afternoon, it's a big weekend of sport. Premier League action from 1.30, Everton v Nottingham Forest and FA Cup semi-final action once again from 3.30 Coventry City against Manchester United. We'll also be bringing you live updates of the London Marathon uh, getting going with a wheelchair race from 5 past 9 this morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. This is live coverage of the Chinese Grand Prix. The fifth round of what is the longest season in Formula 1 history. 24 rounds in total and China has so far hosted the first of six sprints events. We've had the sprint qualifying. We've had the sprint race. That went to Max Verstappen. But now it is back to business with the Grand Prix as Max Verstappen lines up on pole position. Alongside him, his teammate Sergio Perez makes it a Red Bull lockout. On the back row will be a lonely Yuki Tsunoda in 19th. Logan Sargent in the Williams starts from the pit lane. The green light fly, flies at the back of the pack. It's all eyes to the lights and foot to the floor as we go racing for the Chinese Grand Prix. Good start from Verstappen. Immediately cuts across to defend from his teammate Perez. Alonso from third. Round the outside of Perez. Up into second in the Aston Martin and trying it round the outside of Verstappen. Alonso though has to slot in behind Verstappen who leads this race. Verstappen out of turn two. Runs wide. Alonso takes a much tighter line but is struggling to get the grip on exit. Slots in behind as we now approach over the crest. Downhill breaking into the right hander of turn six. Verstappen leads Leads Alonso, leads Perez, who's now under pressure from the McLaren of Lando Norris. Fantastic start by Fernando Alonso, firing those medium compound tyres up absolutely perfectly off the start line. That's how to do it, Lando. That's how to go around the outside. 
making their way round this just over 5.4 kilometre, 3.3 mile circuit, 16 turns, seven to the left and nine to the right. It's been a fairly clean and tidy start. The Stafford leads, Alonso, Perez, Norris, Piastri, Russell up at the sick. There's drama going on further back as Joe Guanyu makes a move down the inside of one of the houses. It's Kevin Magnussen over 16th spot. He makes the move. The Chinese driver now looking all over the back of the RB of Daniel Ricciardo, who's lost a couple of positions started this race in 12th down to 15th that's what's going on further back in the pack fast forward up the field a little bit and the Ferrari is going toe to toe with Nico Hulkenberg who is up into 7th but the Leclerc Ferrari diving down the inside of the hairpin and now Sainz trying to make a move as well as we approach the final corner Hulkenberg who makes his 208th Grand Prix start up in 8th at the moment but with a Ferrari all over the back of him end of lap 1 Verstappen Alonso Perez Norris Piastri the top 5 Russell Leclerc Sainz sweeps round the outside of Nico Hülkenberg's ass towards turn one just about gets the move done signs up to eight Hülkenberg ninth stroll tenth yeah not the start that the Ferrari wanted during this Grand Prix they were down in eighth and ninth Nico Hülkenberg had had a phenomenal start as we see Russell. George Russell oh, just having a late late dive on the back of Oscar Piastri but not being able to get it done in the background, I just saw Lance Stroll on the soft compound tyres getting past Nico Hülkenberg. Russell made a good start as well. Started this race down in eight, jumped both the Ferraris and is up into sixth spot. The two McLarens as well, stabilizing in fourth and fifth. But uh, it was a very happy start indeed for Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin. Started this race in third, making the move on Perez to get second. Here's Hamilton. That was Hamilton on the radio saying, uh, saying I'm making no ground with this tyre and he's losing ground. In fact, he started this race in 18th. He's, off the, he's on the soft compound tyre and he's fallen down to 19th. Lap 2 of 56 of the Chinese Grand Prix. Verstappen leads by 2.3 seconds to Alonso, Perez, Norris, Piastri, the top five, Russell, Leclerc, Sainz, Stroll, Hülkenberg, the top 10, Bottas is 11th, Ocon, Albon, Gasly, Ricciardo, the top 15, Sonoda, 16th, Magnussen, Joe 18th, Hamilton 19th, and Logan Sargent started from the pit lane, closing to the back of the pack, down in 20th position. Here's Albon in 13th. This guy is moving like a everywhere on the brakes. Albon there, I would assume, referring to the car in front of him, which is Esteban Ocon, uh, moving in the braking zone, perhaps. We haven't seen what Alex Albon is referring to on that occasion. Of course, you cannot move once you have committed to your line into the braking zone. Albon closing in behind the Alpine of Esteban Ocon. Lap three of 56 then. Who have you got your eye on, Sam, then, once it starts to settle down a bit? I mean, a great start from Fernando Alonso. We know he likes to get his elbows out. Perez is still right there with him, but Alonso is defending. Uh, he played that so well at the start. He knew that it would very slightly concertina up with Perez in the wheel tracks of Max Verstappen. He needs to send it around the outside. Sending it around the outside also is Lewis Hamilton on home favourite Joe Guan Yu. Lewis Hamilton up to 18th. But my eyes are firmly on Fernando Alonso. How do Aston Martin now play this? He's out of position pretty much from where his car should be, up in second place. Remarkable stuff. But also then the cars around him, Perez, Norris, Piastri, and the Ferraris. How do they play this? Do they try and undercut him, or do they try and go longer? That's gonna be the key phase of the race. Come probably lap 16 to 20, where are people going to start to dive into the pits? Meanwhile, coming towards the end of lap three, as we begin lap four, Jenny, Max Verstappen with now over three seconds in front of Fernando Alonso. Yeah, he managed to break that DRS show very quickly because Alonso, while it's great for us watching and listening that he managed to slot into the P2, actually it's holding everyone back. So any fight from the, for the win for, from Verstappen is in trouble at the minute. But uh, Alonso's still out there in second place and holding on from Perez. 
It's been a bit of a miserable start for the home favourite, Joe Guanyu. Started this race down in 16th, has lost positions, now down in 19th, only in front of Logan Sargent. This is the sound of Lewis Hamilton, who has now made his way back up to where he started in 18th. He's on the soft compound attire, and he's looking at the back of the Haas of Kevin Magnussen, but he's stuck in a little bit of a train of cars with Sonoda, Ricardo, Gasly, Albon, Ocon, Bottas, all directly in front. In fact, it's a really tight fight from 9th all the way back to 18th, Lewis Hamilton. And you can also include Joe and Sargent in that. They're only a further second behind them. Hamilton looking at the back of Magnussen, who's on that hard compound attire and making the move to get himself up into 17th position. And now he'll set his sights on Yuki Tsunoda, the Japanese driver in the RB, who's so far been struggling this weekend. Further back up front, though, DRS now activated, has been for the last couple of laps. Perez closing in under braking to the back of Fernando Alonso coming into the hairpin. We saw this yesterday as well, though, Sam. Perez just can't get close enough to make the overtake or even make a, 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 an attempt. Oh, you've taken the words right out of my mouth. I was going to mention... No, no, no. I was going to mention yesterday we saw exactly the same thing. While Fernando Alonso still got tyres underneath him, he's extremely good through and out of turn 13, which makes it very difficult for Sergio Perez to have a go into turn 14 at the end of the long straight. He can get close round here, but there's no overtaking through here. Fernando's traction is superb. And looks like Alonso's pushing their tyres a lot harder than us. This is good. That's Lando Norris being told that they think uh, Alonso is pushing his tyres more. And as we say that, Perez does make the move down the inside of the right-hander of turn six. Actually pretty easy in the end for the Mexican who gets back up into second. Alonso can't fight it and has to settle behind. Follows that Red Bull through the left-hander and then the right-hander sweeper of turn seven and eight. And Perez now already making a gap and trying to catch back up to his team. Teammate Verstappen, who now leads by five seconds from teammate Perez. Then it's Alonso, Norris and Piastri, the top five. As we get another look, Sam, at the start of the race. Watch how Max Verstappen comes and covers the inside line to Sergio Perez. He then... Perez then has to check up a bit and Fernando just fully sends it round the outside. Gets enough of an overlap on Perez to keep second place, but not enough to get Max Verstappen. This is the sound of Fernando Alonso's start. So he had a bit of clear track in front of him with the two Red Bull squabble, but then was squeezed right to the outside as Perez tried to defend his position. But that left that outside line for Alonso to try and sweep round the back. Uh, further down, his teammate Lance Stroll was making moves with a uh, more grip at the start, courtesy of the soft compound of tyres. Getting quite feisty with Hulkenberg. Copy that, Nico reported. I would I would agree with that. I think the Lance Stroll has just left him no room. This is the sound further back of Lewis Hamilton, who actually lost most of his positions at the start of the race. Didn't get an ideal start and then was recovering. Made the move uh, on Joe, then made the move on Magnussen, coming into the left-handers uh, of turn 9 and 10. Hamilton, currently in 17th, now stuck behind the RB of Yuki Tsunoda. It's lap 6 of 56 of the Chinese Grand Prix. Max Verstappen leads by 5.5 seconds. Then it's Sergio Perez in second, Fernando Alonso rounds out the top three. Norris, Piastri, the top five. Russell, Leclerc, Sainz, Stroll, Hulkenberg currently rounding out the points finishes in 10. Bottas, Ocon, Albon, Gasly, Ricardo, the top 15. Sonoda, Hamilton, Magnussen, Joe and Sargent, the 20 drivers all still in this race. So it's it kind of status quo at the front of the pack, the top sort of eight cars, give or take, have not really made or, lo or lost too much in the early phases of the race. It's now going to be about tyre preservation. Who can hang on to these medium compound tyres the best? I think we'll start to see changes in 10 or 12 laps. Norris in the McLaren now starting to close up to the back of the Aston Martin of Alonso. His teammates, Oscar Piastri, having to look in his mirrors because he's got George Russell and the two Ferraris for comfort. Valtteri Bottas and Nico Hülkenberg fighting for the final points paying position. Bottas looking to make a move down the inside of the 
hairpin down that long back straight. Not close enough to have a look. He'll get a nice run out of the final corner, get a bit of DRS down towards turn one and try and make that move. But that final point, so valuable for those teams in that second part of the Constructors Championship. Haas versus Sauber over 10. Bottas tucked up behind Hulkenberg as it currently stands. Bottas started this race just behind Hulkenberg. Both of them have lost positions, but still a point up for grabs in these early stages. Battle for third, though, Sam, still ongoing. Norris now closing up to the back of Alonso, who may well, do you think, have gone too hard on his tyres too early? I'm really liking the lines that Lando's taking through turn two, three and four to try and preserve those rear tyres. He's keeping it a little bit tighter uh, and lowering his minimum speed at turn three, doing less distance than Fernando. Fernando's minimum speed is higher, but he's putting a lot more energy through that rear right by doing so. So I think that, yeah, Lando's tyres will be in slightly better shape at this stage of the race than Fernando Alonso's. Top eight runners, all on the medium compound attire. Lance Stroll, who started down in 11th, elected to go for the soft compound. He's managed to get up into ninth. Uh, Sonoda, Hamilton and Sargent, the other runners on the soft compound attire. Magnussen, the only driver on that hard. Here comes Norris, though, with DRS down the back straight, down the inside into the hairpin, blocks off the corner from Alonso. Norris in the McLaren makes his way up into third spot. Alonso tried to hold it around the outside, but couldn't make it happen. Norris then to the line to end lap seven, starting lap eight. Now third, it's Verstappen, Perez, Norris, Alonso, Piastri, the top five. Do you know what? Lando practiced that move on the reconnaissance lap to the grid. He tried to see what the grid would be like if he sent it down the inside of somebody. That's exactly what he's done to get onto the podium spots. He pushed me wide. That's what me up right. That was Pierre Gasly in the Alpine, uh, who is uh, having a, uh, a fierce battle with Alex Albon, who, with the RS down the inside, trying to get P13 from Gasly, and on the exit of the hairpin, Gasly forced out wide, felt like he was pushed wide. We'll see if that gets investigated by the stewards. Uh, it's Verstappen, Perez, Norris, the top three. Alonso fourth in front of Piastri. Uh, Russell is sixth, who has got Charles Leclerc and the Ferrari all over the back of him as they now come in to the double left-hander of turn 9 and 10. Leclerc eyeing this one up, I think, on the back straight. A little update at the front of the grid because we haven't really mentioned him so far. Max Verstappen is currently lapping around half a second a lap quicker than his teammate and, and just continuing to romp away. The lead is currently six and a half seconds. That was the voice of the McLaren Formula E driver, Sam Bird, alongside myself, Harry Benjamin. This is the sound of Charles Leclerc getting up to eight gear, down that 1.4 kilometer back straight with DRS closing up to the back of George Russell's Mercedes. You have to take that inside line and defend at the end of the straight into the hairpin. That will compromise his exit. Leclerc carrying a little more, bit more speed, but not enough, has to settle for behind the British driver for the time being as they make their way onto the main straight. He'll get another dose of DRS will the Monegasque in the Ferrari Russell forced to defend once again into turn one but Leclerc sweeping round the outside makes the move in front of Russell but he keeps a nose in does Russell but it's not enough Leclerc takes away that sixth position from George Russell Leclerc up into sixth Russell down to seventh he had tried to hold on to that one for as long as he could Sam but in the end that Ferrari just looked like it was carrying way more speed. Absolutely. He carried so much momentum around the outside through turn one into turn two. Even though he went the long way around, as we see, we see a good pit stop by Joe Guan Yu and the Sauber team. Three seconds. First pit stop's coming in. It's towards the back of the field. Three seconds from Joe Guan Yu Sauber. Uh, they've had to do something for Joe, who was languishing down at the back. They put him on the hard compound attire. Also pitting Yuki Sonoda in the RB uh, has pitted along with Nico Hulkenberg, who was up in 10th, electing to come into the pits. Hulkenberg actually plummeted down the order in the sprint race. Uh, they think it was tyre degradation, really affecting Hulkenberg's Haas. So uh, the German might be struggling a little bit with tyre deg in this race as well. As signs is told, we are on plan B on the radio. So going back to what Charles Leclerc was able to do on George Russell, the fact that he got the whole car in front was the key to that manoeuvre. The fact that the car, the, the corner tightens so much into turn two means you need a full overlap. 
Lap 10 of 56 of the Chinese Grand Prix. It's Max Verstappen who leads Perez, Norris, Alonso the top four. Then it's Piastri, Leclerc, Russell, Sainz, Stroll, Bottas the top ten. Jenny Gao. Yeah, just looking at Alonso and watching his race pace, it seems like he was always aware that that was going to be the case. He was going to be a bit of a sitting duck with those tyres. And the Aston Martin not really being able to hold on to those tyres as well as other people. So he didn't put up too much of a challenge after Perez had gone through. He's now sitting P4, perhaps closing that gap to almost one second and DRS will be enabled. More pit stops taking place as well as you speak, Jenny. Strolls in, Bottas, Ocon, Albon, Hamilton as well comes into the pits. Uh, the battle still goes on though for seven Seventh place, Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari, trying to get through on the Mercedes of George Russell. This is the sound of the Spaniard, the only other man to win a race in this season that isn't Max Verstappen through the double left-hander of turns nine and ten. His teammate got through last lap around. The two Ferraris are expecting them to have a little bit more pace uh, and uh, to be higher up the field, certainly challenging uh, the McLarens who came into this weekend uh, quite downbeat, thinking this wasn't going to be the track for them. But they, at the moment, find themselves in third with Lando Norris. Piastri is fifth. Then it's Leclerc in sixth. Then onto the back straight, Russell in seventh. But Carlos Sainz will have DRS, will close up with that and an aid of toe. Russell going towards the hairpin doesn't make the move to the inside although Sainz was trying to do a little bit of a dummy just having a little look at Russell's inside line but it's status quo for the time being as they make their way around the final corner. Russell doing a good job to keep in front of Sainz. Absolutely. Sainz is just trying to put him off a little bit in any way that he can trying to fill his mirrors make him worry about the car behind into turn one still behind is signs to russell that was the worst time that's hamilton on the radio jenny he pitted a last lap around he's now put that medium tire on he's got rid uh, of the soft uh, down in 19. do you know what though i think everyone out there is struggling with tires you just look at it the degradation is higher than expected uh, with in lap 11 they were predicting the pit stop window would be 14 so it's a bit earlier than expected into the right hander of turn six, Russell forces a fend, bit of a lock up on the Mercedes, that gives signs the wider line on the exit, closes right up and then it's one car at a time through the left hand and the right hand sweepers of turn seven and eight, signs trying desperately to force Russell into a mistake as the Ferraris who are faster trying to carve their way through the field, Russell jumped both Ferraris at the start of this race, kept them both behind but Leclerc has now got through, signs it's just a matter of time and the two Ferraris will be desperate, Sam, won't they? To make up time to the McLarens, who are currently both ahead of them. Norris third, Piastri fifth. But Leclerc is very, very close to the back of Oscar Piastri as we go down the straight. Leclerc oh, keeps to the inside and gets Oscar Piastri down the inside. Does he get it stopped? Yes, he does. Charles Leclerc up to fifth. That was so close. A late move to defend for Piastri, but it was too late. Leclerc makes the move stick. The Ferrari now in front of that McLaren Leclerc up into fifth as we cross the line for lap 12 Alonso comes into the pits uh, that bumps everyone up in position so it's Leclerc fourth Piastri fifth Sainz now has got through on Russell but because Russell has also come into the pits so Alonso and Russell make their way this is the sound of Fernando Alonso's pit stop in the Aston Martin nice and tidy uh, pit stop only a tenth between Alonso and Russell. Alonso 2.6, Russell 2.5 as more pit stops uh, happen further back. Pierre Gasly and the Alpine coming in as well from outside of the points. At the top two, Verstappen leads Perez, then it's Norris, Leclerc, Piastri now the top five, then it's Sainz, Ricardo, Magnussen the top eight. Sergeant and Alonso feeding back out after that pit stop in 10th with Russell a couple of seconds behind him in 11th. Stroll, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Ocon the top 15, Sonoda, Hamilton, Albon, Joe, Gasly 20th. Problem for Gasly, his pit stop took almost 20 seconds. Uh, they lifted it up. Um, but then he almost got released. This is actually a Sonoda, I think, got released into the pathway of um, another car, the Sauber car that was coming in at the same time. It was almost a collision, but managed to uh, not um, get involved in that. But yeah, Gasly, 22nd pit stop when he came in for the Alpine. 
Yeah, not great news for the Alpine. Uh, Lance Stroll as well, having to do a bit of avoid, avoiding action as the Williams came into his pit stop as Lance Stroll was released. So getting a bit tight in the pit lane, Sam. Very tight in the pit lane. It's going to be getting tighter between Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris. This, for me, is probably the most exciting battle and most intriguing battle that we're going to have for this Grand Prix. That final place on the podium. Can Lando Norris hold on to the fast-charging Charles Leclerc? How do they play it with the pit stops? Are they going to pit Lando Norris early to get him some breathing space and, and get him up in terms of lap times compared to Charles Leclerc? Or will Charles Leclerc pit earlier than Norris? The top eight currently in this race have yet to come in to the pits. Lewis Hamilton, who started this race down in 18, has come into the pits. He now finds himself in 17, struggling to get past Yuki Tsunoda's RB in front of him. With DRS, Hamilton, though, closes up down the main straight, round the outside, into turns one and two. The seven-time champion makes the move on the Japanese driver, who tries to keep a nose in, but as they feed their way out through turn two, you almost go back on yourself to the left-hand side. That means Sonoda has the outside. Hamilton with the advantage on the inside makes the move, but in the run down to the right-hander of turn six, Sonoda not giving this one up, but has to settle behind. Force Hamilton to defend going into the right-hander. Didn't make it easy for the champ. He gets the position. But the pace is this. That's Leclerc saying, happy to go longer if we need to, but this is the pace. Currently down uh, in uh, fourth spot, chasing Charles Leclerc. Uh, last lap around as Perez and Verstappen are both going to come into the pits. Red Bull are going to try and do a double stack here. Verstappen in and out uh, within a blink of an eye. 2.1 seconds. So Perez now in great work from the Red Bull mechanics to oversee a double stack pit stop. Both of them coming in and heading back out again. That's just a show of their supremacy, isn't it? That they can do double stack. One and two both come in. Pit stops 2.1 and two seconds respectively and get them back out. And I mean, they're they are so dominant at the moment, aren't they? Norris is now leading the race and he's saying that the pace is strong. So a lot of people actually getting the most out of their tyres are some that have released them early and others that are holding on. For example, Lance Stroll started on the soft tyres and he was able to hold on well. He's only just coming for his pit stop onto the medium. So yeah, very different um, strategies unfolding in front of us, which could lead to a really exciting end of the race. Stay tuned. Absolutely. This is live coverage of the Chinese Grand Prix. You know what made that pit stop even more impressive is that to make that double stat work, Verstappen eked out nine tenths uh, on the inlap to the pits over his teammate Perez just to give himself that little bit more of a buffer. Just a show of actually how easy he's taking it out there, which isn't great for us. But I mean, it just shows he is on the form of his life in the car that is in the form of its life. So, yeah. Uh, Easy, isn't it, for Verstappen and for Red Bull? Oh, and we're just, uh, you mentioned earlier, Jenny, the, the slow Alpine pit stop. We've just seen a replay of it, and it's the right rear that proves troublesome. And actually, the car gets lifted down from the jacks, and the wheel pops off. It's not fitted correctly. It actually hits one of the mechanics who does get back up again, but a really bad, messy pit stop for Alpine. Do you know what? It looked like it was actually still up on its jacks at the back. And I don't know how, because they're automated now to a certain extent, but you have to press a green light for that car to be released. And it, it happened. Is he okay? Yep, all good here, Pierre. That was Gasly just asking if uh, if everybody was okay after that pit stop and uh, his engineer coming back with, yes, all okay. So Gasly after that, now down in 20th and last. So that 15 of 56 of the Chinese Grand Prix pit stops uh, playing themselves out. That's why Lando Norris finds himself leading this race. 6.9 seconds clear of Charles Leclerc. Max Verstappen, who has pitted, now on the hard compound attire in third in front of Piastri, signs the top five. Perez, Alonso, Russell, Magnussen, Stroll, the top 10. Hulkenberg ahead of Bottas in 11th and 12th. Then it's Ocon, Hamilton, Sonoda, the top 15. Albon, Joe, Ricardo having just pitted, now comes out in 19th in front of Logan Sargent. And Pierre Gasly after that slow 20-second pit stop for Alpine now finds, it, finds himself 20th and last in this race. Lando Norris did a really good job trying to keep the, the gap around six and a half, seven seconds to Charles Leclerc. In fact, it's gone up again, I think, on the last lap, a couple of tenths faster for Lando Norris. 
I, I like what McLaren are doing at the moment. I think they realise that their fight is not with Red Bull today, not at all. The Max Verstappen and, and Sergio Perez are gone. Their fight is with Charles Leclerc. Right now, it's advantage Lando Norris. Yeah, the, the fight is on for third place, really. That's what we're looking at. Uh, we're just uh, being shown a, uh, a replay of a move that Lance Stroll made down the inside into the right-hander of turn six on the Haas of Kevin Magnussen to get himself up into ninth. And Magnussen has yet to pit, staying out on the hard compound attire that he started this race. So Haas, the two Haas cars splitting their their strategies uh, with Hulkenberg just a couple of seconds behind having switched on to the hard compound tyre in the last few laps and the two Haskars 10th and 11th. Uh, Verstappen who had a mighty pit stop Red Bull double stacking Verstappen and Perez is now close right up to the back of the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc as they eke over the crest of turn five sparks fly from the underside of the ferrari and the red bull of verstappen dies down the inside later on the brakes nice and easy move leclerc didn't fight it verstappen back up into second now 6.8 seconds to find to close up to norris who leads this race having yet to pit jenny yeah those um players that have yet to pit is norris who leads the race as you say that is leclerc piastri Sainz, um and then you have to go all the way back to kevin Mag Magnussen, who is the only other driver not to have a pit stop yet. And that uh, that overtake for Verstappen, he's, he's 20 seconds ahead of Leclerc. That just shows, in real terms, the pace advantage that he has. It is mighty work from Max Verstappen once again. Perez came into the pits as well, just behind Verstappen. He's currently down in sixth where he fed out. Uh, he's behind Sainz and Piastri, who have yet to come in. Here's Hamilton on the radio down in 14th. I can't even catch him, mate. The car is so slow. That's what Lewis Hamilton says on the radio, and he is referring to Esteban Ocon and the Alpine, who is currently in front of him in 13th. Hamilton was for a long time behind Yuki Tsunoda in the RB. Couldn't make a move on him. Finally was able to do so with the aid of DRS, sweeping around the outside of Turn 1, languishing down at 14th at the moment. Uh, first of the McLarens comes into the pits. It's Oscar Piastri who makes his way towards his garage, hits his mark, and the McLaren mechanics get to work replacing all four tires a little bit of a delay to releasing that car 2.8 seconds we've seen quicker Piastri then falling down the field we'll see where he feeds out uh, should come out uh, Stroll goes through he should come out in front of the two Haas cars he does indeed Piastri out in ninth as the two Haas drivers uh, battle behind in 10th and 11th Further up, Perez in fifth, having pitted, closing in on the back of Carlos Sainz. Actually just had a bit of a lockup trying to get through on Sainz, who's on that medium compound attire, who hasn't pitted. So Sam Perez just isn't able to, to cut through as easily as Verstappen, is he? He has an outright advantage. Here's Leclerc first. What do you think about plan D for Delta? If we are happy with these places. So that's Leclerc being told, what do you think about plan D? So on lap 17, Ferrari already on plan D. Uh, Leclerc currently in third, so that might well mean staying out if they're happy with this pace uh, on that medium compound tyre, Sam. I think that means a one-stop, Harry. To be honest, I think that plan D is a one-stop. The fact that they're saying, if you're happy with this pace, then we can try it. Uh, I think it's... Is that risky? They're, they're going for third place, aren't they? Let's face it, as... Perez has a go on Sainz. Still can't do it. Box for Sainz. Now this will be interesting because Perez is on the out. Oh, he's had to filter in behind. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, Sainz was told to box. His tyres have uh, screamed enough and uh, it was going to be a little bit spicy uh, with the pit lane entry. You basically don't turn left to make the final corner. You keep going straight uh, to take the pit lane entry. And, uh, well, that line was blocked by Perez, but Sainz realising uh, he was boxing, I think, just lifted off slightly, and he's now in the pit. So we think that Leclerc in the other Ferrari might well be trying a one-stop. Remember, he did a one-stop in Japan last time around as well in his uh, Ferrari uh, and ended up finishing uh, in fourth position in that race, uh, having started down in eighth. So... 
Leclerc proving to be uh, a little bit of a tyre whisperer uh, in these stages. Norris leads, he is yet to pit, and with the main fight is between Norris and Leclerc over third place. Verstappen has almost a, a, a lap in hand once the pit stops play out in terms of advantage over the rest of the field. Verstappen second, Leclerc third, yet to pit. Perez fourth, has pitted. Alonso fifth, Russell, Stroll, Piastri, Hulkenberg, Sainz feeds out from his pit stop in tenth in front of Bottas, Ocon, Hamilton up to 13th, still behind Ocon, can't get through on the Frenchman, Sonoda behind, Ricardo 15. Leclerc and Sainz are incentivized to go long, Leclerc might even try the one stop. As Lando Norris being told what the situation might well be with Leclerc going for a one stop, this is the sound of Lando Norris as he comes into the final corner, doesn't go into the pit, so McLaren and Norris staying out as well. Both have done 17 laps on a medium compound of time. Make that 18 as we come across for another lap. Um, Signs rounds out the top 10 in front of Bottas, Ocon, Hamilton, Sonoda, Ricardo, the top 15. Albon, Joe, Sargent, Gasly, Magnussen has now pitted and comes out 20th and last. Jenny. Yeah, just Sam, just asking you a question, really. We saw Science having to kind of lift off as he couldn't get around and get into the pits. That'll have cost him time, and your coming into the pits is as important as getting back out and doing that nice clean lap after your pit stop. Do you think that would be costly for him? It, he probably lost half a second there, Jenny, so it's not the end of the world in the great scheme of things. I mean, Science is... His most immediate rival was his teammate, which was a few seconds up the road anyway, so I don't think it will cost him any positions. I just wanted to talk quickly, Jenny, about Norris again versus Leclerc. I think Norris now, with where he is in the race, he's just got to shadow whatever Charles Leclerc does. He can't... He, I think he's now got to commit to thinking that they might have to do a one-stop as well. And last lap around, Norris has averaged a couple of tenths of a second per lap just quicker than Leclerc. I mean, it's nip and tuck between them both. Uh, but Norris now, who leads this race, but not for much longer because Verstappen has caught up to the back of him with DRS down the back straight, moves to the inside. Norris allows him the room. Verstappen retakes the lead of the Chinese Grand Prix. Lando Norris down to second, has yet to pit, but his battle is not for the race win. It's not with Max Verstappen. His battle is with Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari as both cars might well be attempting a one-stop strategy where you only come into the pits once. Lap 20 of 56, Verstappen, Norris, Leclerc, Perez, Alonso, the top five, Russell, Piastri, Stroll, Sainz, Hulkenberg, the top 10, Bottas, Ocon, Hamilton, Sonoda, Ricardo, the top 15, Albon, Joe, Sargent, Gasly and Magnussen, the top 20. A move being made currently by Daniel Ricciardo trying to get through on his teammate Yuki Sonoda into the hairpin. Sonoda takes the inside. Ham uh, Ricciardo with the outside. Sonoda forced to run deep. That allows Ricciardo to cut back. And it's a nice and easy move for the Aussie who seems to have regained uh, a bit of form this time around. Sonoda having a really tough weekend of it so far. Qualified all the way down in 19th. Didn't have an answer for why he was struggling so much. Just cannot find the grip on the rear end of that RB. But Ricciardo now up into to 14th, Sonoda down to 15th. No points on offer for these positions. Points only go to the top 10. Currently rounded out by Nico Hulkenberg in the Haas. 20 of 56, 2.6 second gap at the top. Verstappen leads Norris by Leclerc. Uh, seven seconds back. Last lap around, what was it for Norris? A 142.6 for Leclerc, a 141.9. So actually Leclerc was quicker last lap around. So that battle continues to embroil. Uh, there's a few nip and tuck battles further down the order. Um, earlier on we saw a, a rough pit stop. Big lock up though uh, for Valtteri Bottas who forced, is forced to run deep going into turn 11. He's come to a stop as well. Is that at the end for the Sauber drivers race the visor gets lifted up problems for Valtteri Bottas who pulls off the circuit and comes to a halt this might mean a engine is gone engine gone copy copy engine is gone for Valtteri Bottas this might mean that Norris and Leclerc have to pit now 
23 seconds average time to come into the pit. Yellow flag is out at the moment to cover that uh, Bottas uh, incident. His engine has gone such a same for the Sauber driver. Uh, this is the sound of Carlos Sainz, who's trying to make his way around the outside of Lance Stroll for ninth place as he cuts his way back through the pack. Uh, double yellows in sector two and sector three to cover off Valtteri Bottas' Sauber. Engine conking out. Jenny. What Norris and Leclerc really need now is for a yellow flag to turn into a safety car or a virtual safety car. They're yet to pit and that would be a really cheap pit stop for them. Big lock up for Carlos Sainz on the front right as he tries to fight and get past Lance Stroll into the right hander of turn six. But of course the big lock up on that front right tyre. Sainz on the hard compound of tyre. Stroll in front on the mediums. Should have been really a little bit easier for Sainz to get through on this Aston Martin but he's struggling at the moment Sam to get through on Stroll. Well hard compound versus medium compound. I'm very surprised. A driver out of the car and no safety car or virtual safety car. I, I disagree with that. In an area where you can so easily snatch a brake and run deep into that runoff area, virtual safety car, Sam, as you say, that has just been called. Um, and I think we would have all called that a little bit earlier. I was going to say, surely that is far too late for the virtual safety car to only just come out now. But that does clear the way for Norris and for Leclerc if they're in the right positions on the track to come in and do a really cheap pit stop. It will only cost Leclerc them 15 pits. seconds. Leclerc pit. He calls it, he comes in, Norris didn't. Leclerc's going to come into the pits then and get rid of his medium compound of tyres. Almost 22 laps they've been going for. Nice quick stop from the Ferrari team, 2.4 seconds. Norris had missed it, had just gone past the pit entry when they called the virtual safety car. Leclerc then will feed out 13 to 15 seconds the loss under a virtual safety car so you gain a bit of advantage because everybody else on the track is forced to run to a, a time delta they cannot exceed that limit so they're all slower on the racing track and where does uh, Leclerc feed out behind Fernando Alonso in fifth Lewis Hamilton is also told to come into the pit so do uh, so too does Lance Stroll further back virtual safety car then on lap 22 of 56 of the Chinese Grand Prix after Valtteri Bottas is sauber reporting that the engine has gone he is out of the car and safely on the sidelines but a shame to see Bottas out of this race it's Verstappen who leads Norris Perez Alonso Leclerc the top five Russell Piastri signs Hulkenberg and Ocon the top ten it was a battle for third place that we were looking at between Norris in the McLaren and Leclerc in the Ferrari Leclerc being trying to do a one stop but with that virtual safety car he had time to come into the pits and he did so Norris missed it but he's just been called Jenny to box box yeah and surprise more people haven't boxed under this uh, virtual safety car as you say Stroll came in Hamilton came in and got rid of those and they they will hope that that's their last trip to the pits but Norris has been called in uh, and he's just coming around turn 14 so it won't be too long until he enters the pits yeah this could be a big win for Ferrari here Norris then coming into the pits but he's forced Sam to run at that delta all the way to the pit lane entry just losing time it's the same for everybody I still he'll come out ahead of Charles Leclerc he will actually because of this close in to Sergio Perez just that little bit does that bring Sergio Perez into play towards the end of the race for the likes of um, Norris and Leclerc so could Perez be vulnerable then? How quick is the pit stop for McLaren? It is nice and quick. 2.1 seconds. Perez feeds through up into second. Leclerc then just comes on to the main straight, but Norris feeds out onto and into turn one. Back out in third. Alonso fourth. Leclerc fifth. Russell, Piastri, Sides, Hulkenberg, Ock on the top ten as the Marshals are really struggling to remove the Sauber car of Valtteri Bottas, which is the reason for the virtual safety car that we have at the moment going on board with Valtteri so as he comes into the braking zone down through the gears I need the car just shuts off it does yeah it, it sounds like an old school karting seize from the rear axle it's like it's just locked which is why the um, the marshals can't actually get it moved normally there's a button on the cockpit that allows the marshals to get the car to neutral now I don't know whether the marshals have either temporarily forgotten they will have been briefed about this and they'll be experienced marshals but maybe the car is just seized and they, they need to extract that car in a faster manner by using some form of mechanical help 
Virtual safety car then continues to be out uh, due to the slightly longer time needed to get Bottas's car out of the way. Valtteri Bottas then has made it back to the pit. Such a saying for the Sauber driver who qualified in the top 10 and was looking to try and get his first points of the season but instead gets his first retirement of the season and the virtual safety car Jenny has just been converted into a full safety car Verstappen is told to pit yeah Verstappen from the lead of this race is told to pit which is interesting timing they pitted on lap 13 only 10 laps later but they are coming in and doing a pit stop under virtual safety car rules which is a cheap pit stop Sergio Perez also told to box as well so that will promote Lando Norris up to second place so Perez then coming in too but the sizable gap between the two Red Bulls almost 20 seconds allows plenty of time for the double stack 1.9 seconds for the staff and Alonso next to be called into the pits all gonna step on put on I should say uh, a nice fresh set of tires the hard compounds go on the two Red Bulls Norris that means will get promoted up into second having just pitted a few laps ago so he'll get Perez who's just coming out of the pit lane now so depending on the length of this safety car this is really intriguing to watch out for how it's going to benefit Lando Norris in the McLaren Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari who also gets through on Perez Leclerc up into third Perez fourth Piastri fifth Sainz gets up into sixth Alonso and Russell both come into the pit so too does Hulkenberg and unlike in a virtual safety car Sam they will all bunch up now behind the safety car Absolutely, it's it's kind of uh, almost a sort of restart, as you like, in comparison to a virtual safety car where everybody's spread out. What's exciting for me now is the fact that Perez is behind Leclerc, and Perez has struggled this weekend in getting past cars quickly and efficiently. If he struggles to get past, Leclerc and Norris could be on for a, for a podium. Fernando Alonso has gone onto the soft tyres, just to give that a little rumbling, because that is not what most people are doing. Most people are coming in and changing onto either the hard or medium tyre, but he's chosen to go onto the soft tyres. Interesting. He's thinking about the restart, isn't he? I, I absolutely think so. I think that these hard compound tyres that everybody's on, running at slow speed behind the safety car, tyre warm-up at the end of the safety car is going to be absolutely vital. Who can fire their tyres up the quickest? We know that... Oh, Hamilton Radio. The car is just sliding around everywhere. I don't know. It's just like something's broken. It's probably just his balance. It's really bad. He hasn't been happy all day, has he, Lewis Hamilton? But the, the tyre warm-up, the McLarens have been very strong at the tyre warm-up. The Red Bulls have been OK, not brilliant. Ferraris, I'd say, have been relatively poor on their tyre fire-up. What could this do, though, for the likes of Norris and Leclerc, who we think were trying a one-stop? Could they still, with the safety car, preserving tyres? We're on lap 24, crossing the line uh, in a moment for lap 25. They could still make that one-stop work, right? I, absolutely. This actually helps them because they pitted one to two laps prior to the safety car coming out, so the timing could not be more perfect. Behind the safety car, you're not putting anywhere near the energy through the tyre that you would be if you were pushing. So this is basically giving them additional tyre life. OK, the, the tyre warm-up will be difficult when we get going again, but they should now be able to get to the end of the Grand Prix. Pit stop for the other McLaren of Oscar Piastri, who comes in and uh, switches on uh, to the hard compound attire as well. 2.2 seconds. Still under safety car conditions here for the Chinese Grand Prix after Valtteri Bottas is sauber, uh, pulled off the road to retire. Verstappen leads Norris, leads Leclerc, Perez signs the top five, Alonso, Russell, Piastri, Ricardo, and Stroll, the top 10. Jenny. Yeah, I think maybe everyone is going to take this opportunity now to pit. I thought some of them were going to stay out. Piastri looked like he was staying out but he's just pitted um sergeant has just pitted as well ricardo might be the only person i haven't seen pit on this lap and they might be just throwing the dice and seeing what they can do but another slow stop for the sauber team um harry not their slowest 5.3 seconds that time around a record? <laughs> well someone's got to um the front right uh, proving sticky on Joe Guanyu Sauber. Now the sole remaining Sauber, the home driver, feeds out in 18th position. Why wouldn't you come in now to, to when the virtual sa safety car and then the safety car is out? Why wouldn't you come in as a, as a driver or a team? Because Ricardo looks still to be circulating 
on his set of tyres, 10 laps down on the mediums. That, I'm not sure. That's a bit of a strange strategy, I would say, from his t him and his, his engineer. I don't quite understand when you've got other people that had only done five or six laps on their tyres coming into pit. So it might be interesting at the end of the race to see what he does, but it doesn't make sense to pit again. Can I ask another question? No. How much, war <laughs> how much warning do you get as a driver that the safety car is going to come in? Because obviously it's it's transmitted, isn't it, on the on the official radio and the official timing screen. How much, do, as, as a driver, would you like to know? So in the driver's briefing prior to the race, things like this will be covered off. They're, they will give an idea on the last a moment that they will call the safety car back into the pits. Normally they do it probably with a sector to go or with three or four corners to go, but they can do it as late as before the second last corner. That was the voice of the McLaren Formula E driver, Sam Bird, alongside myself, Harry Benjamin. Jenny Gao is here as well. It's lap 26 of 56 of the Chinese Grand Prix, uh, this being the fifth round of the Formula One calendar, currently under safety car conditions due to the Sauber of Valtteri Bottas pulling off the road with a suspected engine issue uh, and uh, the issues with the marshals getting that car off the track uh, in a safe position has meant the virtual safety car that initially came out has been converted into a safety car which is now ending so we think everyone will go to the or try and get to the end on the hard apart from alonso that's norris being told everybody on that hard comp and attire they think will try and go to the end except for fernando alonso who is on the soft also daniel ricardo in the rv on the medium as well could he try and get to the end on that that's tricky, very tricky, especially when they've done 10 laps already. So Fernando Alonso now has got to go. He has got to put in 10 laps of qualifying pace, try and get four, five, maybe even up to the lead of this race, then pit again and then do exactly the same thing to finish the race. So Max Verstappen, who leads this race, will let the... Mercedes safety car driven by Bert Mylander get away and back into the pits, which means Verstappen effectively becomes the safety car, sets the pace behind him. Norris, Leclerc, Perez signs the top five. Alonso, Russell, Piastri, Ricardo, Stroll, the top 10. Hulkenberg, Ocon, Hamilton, Magnussen, Sonoda, the top 15. Albon, Sargent, Joe, Gasly, the 19 drivers that remain in this race with Valtteri Bottas retiring. He's back and safe in the pit lane. Safety car then coming to an end every driver using the last few laps of virtual safety car into safety car to come into the pits we expect everybody on the hard compound attire to now try and make it to the end Verstappen weaving left and right trying to get those tires up to temperature and decide when the prime moment is to put his foot to the floor and get back racing in the safety car has made it back to the pit lane it concertina's up now Verstappen bunching the whole pack at the end of the hairpin on exit he's then on the exit it. He's gone. Verstappen gets this race back underway into the final corner to start lap 27 of 56 at the Chinese Grand Prix. Verstappen leads Norris, Leclerc, Perez, Sainz, Alonso, Russell, Piastri, Hulkenberg and Stroll, the top 10. And they are your point scorers. Still a long way to go in this race as we head into turns one and two. Now, how quickly can Perez make his way past Leclerc and Norris if he's got any chance of finishing second or even challenging Verstappen, which I don't think is possible. He's got to get past Leclerc and Norris quickly. Stroll came into the pits at the end of uh, that safety car lap. Uh, he will feed out in 19th unless there's a, an issue for the Canadian. It seems like that pit stop is going on for a little bit longer than uh, he would like. We'll bring you uh, updates on that when we can. Uh, battles going in the middle of the field as well, where it really starts to concertina up. And there is damage for the RB of Yuki Sonoda, the right rear. The wheel is almost off the rim as he pulls off onto the grass in sector two. That's coming through turns on the exit of turn six and seven. Yellow flag out. Can he put that car in a safe place or will we require another safety car intervention? We haven't seen what happened to Sonoda. Hopefully we'll get another look at it. But the Japanese driver who's never raced here in China before been struggling all weekend for pace finding himself now heading out of this race and we see the 
last car of Kevin Magnussen. Sparks flying, driving very slowly. Contact suspected then between the Magnussen car and Sonoda on the build-up. And that was why Lance Stroll went into the pits as well, as it all backed up into the hairpin at the end of the long straight. Stroll just went straight into the back of Sonoda, who I think went into the back of Zinia Ricardo. On the brain tech wing damage. This is the sound on board with Nico Hulkenberg. And it was Stroll who went into the back of Ricardo in the RV. So Sonoda wasn't involved in that incident. And that gave a lot of damage to Stroll, who then, you just heard on the radio there, had to come into the pits. And this is as they were just about to get back going again after the safety car. We haven't seen how Sonoda got damaged though just yet. That's Ricardo getting biffed at the back by Lance Stroll. Now this is the sound of Kevin Magnussen down the inside of the right-hander of turn six, gets up the inside of Stroll, of uh, Sonoda, and there's contact between the front left of Magnussen and the rear right of Sonoda, and that sends the Japanese driver into a spin. And that's enough to put him into a complete 360. Yeah. And Sonoda is out of this race as we just get another look overboard. Right, okay, a lot to analyze there, Sam. Um, let's go with the first incident uh, on the replay of the restart of the safety car. Stroll going back into, uh, into the back of Ricardo. Uh, what did you make of that? It looks really, really clumsy, doesn't it? It doesn't look good on TV, but I've been in those situations. And when it concertinas up like that before a restart, it is really, really easy to get it wrong. I've seen it many, many times. I've actually been involved in it before, being hit up the back in those kind of situations. Uh, but you never like to see it, especially in Formula One. That has brought out the safety car, by the way, so the field immediately bunches back up. Um, and then the Magnuson on the inside of, of Sonoda incident. Ugh. I think that K-Mag's got to take the, the blame for that. He was the car behind. I don't think Sonoda even knew that he was there, to be honest. Um, why would he? he? He had the corner. Okay, he'd run maybe a, a meter, meter and a half wide of the apex, but even so. Yeah, clum clumsy opening lap uh, at the restart there. Two consecutive point scoring finishes for Yuki Tsunoda. That will not turn into a third. He is out of this race. Uh, meanwhile, though, it, it was double trouble for RB because Ricardo was the innocent victim uh, with issues now reported uh, on the floor after Stroll went straight into the back of him at the end of the hairpin. Jenny? Yeah, it was a, quite a big bang down back onto the tarmac after he'd kind of gone up. So, yeah, uh, undoubtedly there's floor damage for Daniel. It's whether they can limp round with that floor damage, with how badly it affects them. Um, he's currently in P9, having only made one stop and on those medium tyres. It's, sh it's a shame, really. Carlos Sainz Radio. Lando D for Delta, for both cars. You think it's our best bet? Yes, we do, right now. Plan D for Delta, we think that's, that's going one to the stop. end. Yeah, I think that's the only bet now for many of these drivers. Fernando Alonso on board on the soft. Is this when the safety car comes out? Is that why? He gets alongside him down the back straight. So the Aston Martin ahead yes. of Sainz, ahead of Sainz, uh, Alonso fifth, then I think the safety car came out. So Alonso fifth, Sainz sixth. The, uh, this, what's happened in the race with this second safety car actually I think has hindered Fernando Alonso. I don't think really, can he really get to the end now on a set of softs? I mean, we saw um, George Russell do it yesterday, but that was an 18-19 lap race. He's still got, my maths is terrible. Well, we're over half, we're just <laughs> we're over, over half halfway. halfway. So he's got we're halfway half. to go. Yeah. We've, 27? 27 laps right? to go, exactly. 20, that's an, you know, 27 is, that's a long way to go on a set of softs. He needed, you know, normal race to be resumed, no safety car. He needed to be making progress, not 
having a safety car counting down the laps. But hasn't he made that progress? He's picked off one, so he's, he's made up one, one yeah, and he'll hope up. under safety car that he can get even further, he can go Absolutely, longer. Absolutely, but he needed, he needed more laps at racing speed to get the gap to the cars behind. But his restart pace will be again better than everyone yes. else around yes, him. Yes, it will, it will I'm be. trying to make it interesting. No, 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 <laughs> I, I, and I get that. But I, this, this safety car hurts their strategy a little bit, is what I'm trying to say. There's a saying in motorsports, Sam, is there? Yellows breed yellows. Safety cars breed more safety cars. This is a second safety car that we've had within the space of a lap of restarting. It could Alonso and Aston Martin also just be playing a bit of a, a hope game and think, well, what if we get a third safety car? Then, then they could make it to the end. Yeah, right now they're in a difficult window, I would say. But as the laps go down, they might start, you know, start to think, actually, we could do this on one on one stop. Well, Alonso currently finds himself in fifth spot. Lap 30 of 56 under safety car conditions once again. This time, uh, as the marshals. Uh, extract Yuki Tsunoda's stricken RB car after he made contact with Kevin Magnussen. Uh, that incident has been noted by race control for causing a collision and at the same time uh, as the safety car restart was happening, Lance Stroll went straight into the back as it concertinaed up under braking, went into the back of the RB of Daniel Ricciardo the innocent victim in that one because he had the McLaren of Piastri right in front of him as well. So uh, Piastri lucky to, to get away without attack Actually, there might have been the smallest of taps from Ricardo onto the back of Piastri, but it was Ricardo who took the brunt of the Aston Martin going straight in to the rear wing of that RB. So the rear diffuser on the back of Daniel Ricardo's car will have taken an absolute hammering with going up in the air like that. The front wing of Lance Stroll's car really doing quite a bit of damage to the back of that car. Just looking at the chain of reaction on that last uh, second last corner, it seemed to start right uh, before, like as far forward as Alonso. Am I right, Alonso, then Russell? So who was actually at fault when it comes to that chain of reaction? It's it, it, <sighs> hard to say, Jenny, really, really hard to say. But we've all been there on the motorway when it's kind of stacked up and all of a sudden you feel like you have to hit the brakes hard and it just gets worse and worse and worse with the cars behind you. That's exactly what we see, but instead of it being on the motorway at 20 mile an hour in a normal car, you're at, you know, a higher speed in a car where you're inches off the ground in a Formula One car. Is that going to hurt Daniel Ricciardo? Because no, that was he'll a big bang. No, he'll be absolutely fine. Fine. Uh, not ideal, though, when they just changed and brought a new chassis for that RV. No, I think the chassis will be fine. It's more aerodynamic vulnerability now that he will have. Another lap around then, still under the safety car as we cross the line for lap 31 of 56. Verstappen has the lead in front of Norris, Leclerc, the top three, Perez, Alonso, the top five, Sainz, Russell, Piastri, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, the top 10, Hamilton, 11th, Ocon, Albon, Sergeant Joe, the top 15, uh, top 15, Gasly, Magnussen and Stroll did uh, come into the pits and was released back out after that incident with Ricardo, 18th the last, with no Yuki Tsunoda now out of this race and no Valtteri Bottas either. Jenny, just to say, the Alonso uh, Alpine mechanic that was um, got involved in that pit stop is okay. He's okay. That's good news. Uh, the FIA have also said that because it was a, uh, the virtual safety car was what initially all started this with uh, Valtteri Bottas's car that was stuck in gear, so the marshals were not able to push it back to a safe position. Uh, under the virtual safety car. That bred the first safety car. We then got back racing, but then incidents between Sonoda and Magnussen. Do you know why? I mean, I don't see anything anymore on the track. Double yellows are coming between turn 14 and 16, so I can only assume it's debris. If marbles are debris, then maybe. <laughs> So that's for Stafford, essentially giving the hurry up as to can we go racing now? And it seems to have worked because the safety car is coming in at the end of this lap. Uh, so once again, the Stafford will let the safety car peel away and bunch the pack up behind him. But double waves, yellows, still between 14 and 60. Is that what they're saying? That you can go racing again, but there'll be double yellows? I didn't re really follow that message. I think that's an old message now, Jenny. I think that that will be gone away. There would have been 
shards of, of carbon fiber in and around that corner because of the crash with the concertina effect of 1415. But we are about to go racing again in Shanghai. We certainly are onto the back straight. The safety car still making its way back to the pit lane. So Verstappen then effectively becomes the pace setter, weaving left, weaving right, getting heat into the tires as all the 17 cars behind him will do. Safety car back in then. Green flag out, we're ready to go racing and it will be up to Verstappen as when he goes. Last time he led and went out of the hairpin and he does so again, up through the gears, foot to the floor and we're back racing for the Chinese Grand Prix after two safety car interruptions. Verstappen crosses the line to start lap 32 of 56. Verstappen, Norris, Leclerc, Perez, Alonso the top five, Sainz, Russell, Piastri, Ricardo, Hulkenberg the top 10, Hamilton's made gains up into 11th, then it's Ocon, Albon, Sargent, Joe the top 15, Gasly, Magnus and Stroll, 18th and last of the drivers, Sonoda is retired and out of this race after contact with Magnussen. Bottas out of this race with a suspected engine issue. No Sauber, no RB. That leaves us with 18 cars. So we now get back underway. And it is becoming a little bit, Sam, of a tyre race, isn't it now, as we focus in on how long can all of the runners on the hard compound tyre, we suspect them all to go to the end. Alonso is the outlier in fifth on the soft compound tyre. That's the interesting thing. Fernando Alonso out there on the soft compound tyre. What can he do? Can he attack Perez? Can he get past Leclerc? Can he challenge Norris? He might have to stop again. We don't know what Aston Martin are thinking right now. Can they make that soft tyre last to the end? Or is he going to be told, get a move on, get past these people, we need to stop again? Good restart for Lewis Hamilton, who's just picked off Daniel Ricciardo. Hamilton now into the top 10, having started this race down in 18th. Remember, though, Ricciardo uh, with suspected damage after that incident with Lance Stroll. Jenny? Yeah, he has floor damage at the moment. He's only stopped once as well on lap 15, so he's got smelly old tyres as well. Also doing a one-stop is Sainz and Leclerc and Norris. So let's have a look at their tyres. Leclerc, 10 lap old tyres, which is about average with everyone else, but 14 lap old tyres for Sainz, which could compromise his end of the race. Hamilton on 10 lap old tyres and Ricardo on 17 lap old tyres. Those are the outliers at the moment. Yeah, and Ricardo struggling as well. He's just been overtaken by the Alpine of Esteban Ocon. The Williams of Alex Albon will be the next one up to target. The Australian was given a new chassis for this weekend after having a tough start. Coming under pressure is Daniel Ricciardo, but he's had the better of his teammate Yuki Tsunoda all weekend long. Tsunoda, though, now unfortunately out of this race, but with the sole remaining RB, struggling out there on old medium tyres and a damaged floor from contact with Lance Stroll. Albon makes the move and gets himself up in front of Ricciardo. And confirms that by saying, I've got no rear on the exit of the corner. Uh, Ricardo then down to 13th behind him. It's all kicking off. Sergeant 14th, Gasly 15th, Joe battling Magnussen over 16th and 17th. Stroll just behind in 18th and last. And Stroll going for a move down the inside of Magnussen. It's for 17th, but they're still fighting just as hard through the double left-hander of turn nine and 10. That brings you out of the exit, a short blast towards the breaking zone of turn 11. Stroll will try and be carving his way back through the field having come together with the RB of Ricardo on the restart of the safety car but Ricardo being slow here is kind of forcing everyone behind him to scramble for positions it's really concertinaing up down the back straight almost three wide between the cars at the back it's Sargent who gets in front of Gasly who gets in front of Joe and they all get through on Daniel Ricardo, who is plummeted right to the back of the field the others though still fighting hard Ricardo's going into the pits he's returned Tiring the car. Sergeant is 13th. Behind him is Gasly in 14th. Then it's the home hero, Joe, in 15th. Magnussen is 16th. Stroll in 17th. This is a chance for Alpine and Williams, perhaps, sitting just outside the points to get a valuable world championship point. It'll be tough. They've got Nico Hülkenberg in ninth, Lewis Hamilton, seven-time world champion, in 10th. But is there a point up for grabs for Alpine today? 
it's all kicking off further back in the pack. Out in front, it's still 1.7 seconds for Max Verstappen in the lead of this race. Norris, Leclerc, Perez, Alonso, the top five. Jenny. So many penalties being issued by the stewards. We've got a 10-second penalty for Kevin Magnussen for causing a collision. You've got Stroll picking up a 10-second penalty as well, again, for causing a collision. And Sargent getting a 10-second penalty for, in pit uh, for a safety car infringement. So those are the three that have come through so far. Absolutely. Well, as they continue to battle at the back, Stroll just gets through on Magnussen. It's that 34 of 56 of the Chinese Grand Prix. A big weekend of sports, a big day of sports across BBC Radio 5 Live. We've got Premier League action, FA Cup action coming up later this afternoon. And, of course, it's the London Marathon uh, today. Lots going on. Let's get an update. Uh, Ed Harry. The elite wheelchair races are underway, both three minutes in. David Weir racing his 25th London Marathon in a row is seeking his ninth win and we're as credited a new racing chair designed by the Sauber F1 team for revitalizing every aspect of how he's approached this Paralympic year his great rival Marcel Hoog has had one of those chairs for some time he's looking to win London for the fourth year in a row and the sixth time overall in the women's race Eden Rainbow Cooper like Hoog a winner at Monday's Boston Marathon is carrying British hopes Thanks, Ed. Great to hear that as well. And uh, we love a little Formula One crossover too. Lovely stuff. Uh, the battles continue to happen. At the back of the pack, it's Sargent in 13th, Gasly 14th, Joe 15th, and Stroll and Magnussen have been going wheel to wheel for almost a full lap. Stroll down the inside into turn one, gets 16th in front of Magnussen. There's no points up for grabs, Sam, but there's pride. That was fantastic. That, that lap was brilliant. I mean, they are effectively last and second last in this race both of them have got penalties as well but they were going at it like their lives depended on it out there it was absolutely superb racing absolutely nothing to lose between stroll and magnuson fighting over 16th and 17th stroll winning that one out at the moment verstappen still leads then norris leclerc perez alonso the top five signs russell piastri hulkenberg hamilton the top 10 ocon albon sergeant gasly joe the top 15 and stroll and magnuson fighting over 16th and 17th like it's the lead of this race jenny ricardo is now out of the car and unfortunately out for rb as well as the um, rb of sonoda and the Sauber of Bottas and Ricardo really needed a good weekend this weekend he had a uh, this is a double retirement for Ricardo so painful times for the driver whose future is a question mark at the moment with Liam Lawson giving that pressure to him it certainly is uh, 10 second time penalty another one coming for Logan Sargent for a safety car infringement so plenty of penalties to be added on come the end of this race uh, and Magnussen as well for causing a collision gets that penalty uh, for the one with Sonoda 10 second time penalty for Magnussen's way as he just gets in front of Stroll because Stroll calls it quits on that occasion and comes into the pits right further back up front Perez Sam closing in on Leclerc so Leclerc is holding up Perez Norris has gapped them both at the moment. We're seeing Stroll radio. Box this lap. It'll be a 10 second penalty. Unbelievable, man. Such a joke. <laughs> And that was Stroll being, uh, handing his 10-second penalty and well, serving it. I mean, you, you kind of did hit somebody very hard up the back under safety car there, Lance. Um, Norris, Norris is three and a half, four seconds clear of Leclerc, showcasing McLaren's ability to get the heat in those hard compound tyres quite quickly. Can he hang on to them, though? And Lando, for low speed, understeer suggest engine braking. Thank you. Understood. So Norris then being given uh, some some suggested uh, ways of driving. Can you can you translate that message, Sam, for, for us humans? So when the car's ability to turn isn't so strong, what they're able to do is use some software in the car that effectively uses engine braking to help stop the car a bit more than traditionally using the brake pedal and the brakes on each corner of the car. That will help rotate the car quicker, but what that does do is put more energy through those rear tyres. So perhaps Lando is focusing on preserving those rear tyres and just living with a little snippet of understeer. 
Lap 37 of 56. 2.8 seconds is the gap that Max Verstappen has over Lando Norris. Verstappen has had an advantage all weekend long, as usual. The man, the Dutchman, the reigning champion, does not make a mistake. Three seconds now to Norris. Leclerc in third. A further three and a half seconds back from Norris. Then comes Perez, who is right on the gearbox of Charles Leclerc. The Red Bull driver trying to make his way through uh, before the safety cars. It was a Red Bull 1-2, but Perez uh, falling down to four, thanks to Norris and Leclerc going long on the initial stint and pitting under safety car and virtual safety car and gaining that advantage ahead of Perez. Alonso, fifth, still clinging on on his uh, soft compound tyres. He's in front of Fernand, uh, of Carlos Sainz, who's on the hard compound tyre. And actually, they were pretty similar for pace last lap around. Sainz is three seconds back from Alonso for the time being. Then it's Russell. Piastri, bit of a lonely race in eight. Hulkenberg holding on to ninth place at the moment. Then comes Hamilton, who has made the safety car interventions work nicely for him. The Mercedes team calling that well and has jumped up the order. Was languishing down in 18th where he started this race, made up a few positions in that lower mid pack. Now up into 10th spot and rounding out the point scorers. Onto the main straight. The, uh, Perez with the RS closes in to the back of Charles Leclerc. Takes that much wider racing line before tucking in close to the apex of the right-hander of Turn 1 before you feed back on yourself through the left-hander as you almost go back on yourself. Perez closing and closing. Will he try and find a way through down the inside to the right-hander of Turn 6? No, he doesn't. He slots in behind Charles Leclerc, who is just holding Perez up now. Half a second the gap between the Ferrari and the Red Bull in this, the battle for the final post in place. Verstappen leads, Norris, Leclerc, Perez, Alonso, the top five signs. Russell, Piastri, Hulkenberg, Hamilton, the top ten. Just outside of the top ten with upgrades this weekend. Esteban Ocon and the Alpine are having a better race for the team in 11th in front of Albon in 12th. Gasly, the other Alpine, is 13th. Sargent is 14th. He's got Joe for company, though. Six tenths between those two. Uh, Joe spurred on by the home crowd. Magnussen in 16th. A bit detached now. The only driver out there on on the medium compound of tyre. Lance Stroll having come into service. Penalty for crashing into the back of Ricardo on the safety car restart. Feeds out in 17th and last up 30 seconds off the back of the pack. No Ricardo, no Sonoda and no Bottas all retiring from this race, Jenny. And I think Alpine will be relatively happy with this race because uh, Gasly should have been further up the road. He had a 20 second pit stop but it all went terribly wrong for the Alpine team. Um, so Gasly should have been probably 10 seconds further up the road at least the crowd roaring i'm sure coming into the hairpin and getting a great view of joe guan yu down the inside of logan Sargent with the help of drs nice move from the chinese driver who was here at the very first chinese formula one grand prix way back in 2004 then he was just a small child in the grandstand supporting fernando alonso now he's in the grid and just made a move on logan Sargent, gets himself up into 13th spot meanwhile the move's been coming for a while perez finally gets through on Leclerc into turn six but Leclerc comes back at him tries to hang it round the outside of turn seven but it isn't enough Perez finally through and up into third now what will Lando Norris be told on the radio he'll be told Perez passed Leclerc we need to maintain position we need to pick up the pace slightly because Sergio Perez will be coming for him Norris and McLaren have had a really good run here, holding on to second, making use of the safety cars, having good tyre life, managing it well. But now Perez is released from behind Leclerc. That uh, four and a half second gap will start to come down. Here's Leclerc on the radio. Are we sure we are? We think for plan B. Because tyres are not great. So everyone, plan B, what's the, what we believe? 
So that's Leclerc asking, are we sure about plan D? And we believe plan D is very much, if you're on the hard compound of tyre, you go to the end. Leclerc reporting his tyres aren't feeling great, though. I don't know why they continue to say plan D. I mean, I think everybody, everybody now knows what plan D is. We're seeing a replay now of Sergio Perez's move down the inside. I thought he might have a lock-up, but he actually controlled things quite well down there at the apex of turn six. As I said now, it's absolutely critical that Lando has preserved his tyres and saved a little bit for the last sort of 14 laps of the race because that Red Bull of Sergio Perez is going to become larger and larger in his mirrors as we get to the latter stages of this Grand Prix. The other th interesting thing, Fernando Alonso sitting in P5 is on the soft compound tyre. There's still 16 laps to go, sorry. Is he going to be able to hold on? Those tyres will go off six, seven laps quicker than the people around him. Signs is currently behind Alonso, but that gap is four seconds. He's got Russell all behind him. How much damage do I have? Oscar damage is significant. That's Oscar Piastri in the McLaren asking how much damage does he have? The team reporting back, it's significant. I wonder if there was more to meet the eye on that safety car restart where Stroll went into the back of the RB of Daniel Ricciardo. Piastri was the car in front of Ricciardo. On the replays we saw, it looked like very light contact, but perhaps if he's reporting big damage, then there is more there uh, for Piastri, unless he's had another off somewhere that we haven't seen yet. He's currently down in eight. Hulkenberg, one and a half seconds behind him. I think George Russell is really bearing down at the moment on um, science. He's got six lap newer tyres for Russell, and I think the tyres for science have tried the one stopper. I think they're going off now quite violently. Hamilton and Hulkenberg going side by side through the hairpin. Hulkenberg and the Haas currently in ninth place, trying to score crucial points for the Haas team, who've had a really solid start to the season. Hamilton coming back through the pack with DRS. It's been a, a tale of two weekends for, for Lewis Hamilton. The highs of the sprint race coming home in second, but then the lows of qualifying, making a mistake into the hairpin, seeing him plummet down and start this race from 18th position on the grid with the help of safety cars and tyre management. He's now up into 10th spot and is hunting down Hulkenberg in ninth spot. Hulkenberg starting his 208th Grand Prix in Formula One and with that ties with Andrea de Cesar for the most Grand Prix starts without a win. I'm not sure he'll really be thinking too much about that either, but he's fighting tooth and nail for this P9 at the moment. Two points up for grabs, coming into the left-hander of turn nine. Hamilton finds the inside line and gets through. The Mercedes now in front of the Haas. Hamilton ninth, Hulkenberg tenth. With the damage that Oscar Piastri has, I do fancy Lewis Hamilton to catch him and potentially pass him before the end of the race. It might have been a tiny little hit on the back from Daniel Ricciardo's car, but these cars are so intricate when it comes to aerodynamic ability that even the slightest touch can have a massive effect, especially when it's on something as significant as the rear diffuser. Uh, Piastri, uh, one and a half seconds in front of Hamilton at the moment, who's uh, still got Hulkenberg behind him. He hasn't disappeared, still keeping within DRS range. These, the fight for this, the fight for the final points paying positions. But nice little battle there between Hulkenberg and Hamilton. Verstappen leads by five or oh, six seconds. Make that in front of Norris, Perez, Leclerc, Alonso, the top five, still holding on on that soft compound attire. Then it's signed Russell, Piastri, Hamilton, Hulkenberg, the top ten. Sam, I'm curious about Carlos Sainz and, and, and his pace in that Ferrari. I, I, you'd think he would have been able to, to catch right up to the back of, of Fernando Alonso by now on that soft compound tyre. Yes, it's the quicker tyre initially, but it falls off much quicker than the hard. He's lapping about half a second a lap slower than his teammate, Charles Leclerc. Charles Leclerc isn't letting Sergio Perez get away too much. He's trying to stick within DRS. Leclerc, 1.2 seconds back from Perez. You've got to be within a second at the DRS detection point, two of which around this track before you get the DRS down the back straight and then again on the main straight. Uh, Ricardo, who retired from this race after being punted out of it by Lance Stroll, has made his way back to the pits and uh, is now debriefing with the team on the pit wall. That 42 of 56, Jenny. We've seen some fairly clever use of the DRS flap and some strategy coming in 
into play, Sam. In previous races, I think back to Singapore, Las Vegas last year. Do you think there's any room for that to happen here at this race? I found this race really peculiar with DRS because it hasn't looked very powerful. Yeah. I feel like the exit out of 13 has been very, very challenging for cars following other cars. They might look close through 11 and 12, but the traction zone through 13 and getting the power down has been really, really tough. We haven't seen an awful lot of DRS moves, Jenny, this weekend. It's, there's, been, there's been a few, but it's not been full of them as I probably expected there would be, given that this is one of the longest, if not the longest straight of the calendar. Harry, I've just spoken to the team at McLaren and they're saying that yes, Piastri has picked up damage and as you said, it was down to that safety guard restart when Stroll concertinaed into the back of people um, and that incident. They don't know how much damage because they haven't got the car back, they haven't seen it, but they are obviously losing some downforce and those are the points that they can pick off on the pit wall of how much downforce they're sacrificing. So Piastri in P8 at the moment and possibly vulnerable. Kevin Magnussen further back, making a move down the inside of Logan Sargent's Williams. Magnussen with a penalty applied for uh, his incident with the RB of Yuki Tsunoda, which sent Tsunoda out of the race. Uh, had a fierce battle with Lance Stroll over 16th and 17th positions just a few laps ago. But Magnussen now quietly working his way back up the field, uh, now in 13th spot. Um, we mentioned uh, Piastri there with the damage. The gap he has over Lewis Hamilton is about 1.4 seconds, but they're kind of matched in terms of pace last lap around, both setting 141.0. So Piastri holding on to eighth place uh, for the time being. The gap is coming down between Lando Norris and Sergio Perez. It was at about five seconds. It's now down uh, to 3.8 seconds between the two as Alonso, Sam, finally calls it quits on that soft compound attire, comes into the pits on lap 44 of 56. He'll be greeted by his team. He's lifted up on the jacks. They get rid of that soft compound attire and it's some medium tyres going on to the Aston Martin till the end of the race. I mean, he'll be able to fly now until the end of the race. Absolutely give it everything and come in with no rubber left on those medium compound tyres. Can he rescue a point or two from here? He's currently down in 12th place behind Albon, Ocon and Hulkenberg. I think with the amount of laps left, he could still be in the points at the end of this race. Yeah, uh, Alonso feeds out then down in 12th position. Albon will be his next target. Um, lap 44 of 56. Uh, there's been a fair few penalties so far. Jenny, what more have you got for us? Yeah, well, it's Stroll who came in and served his penalty. So he's served that on the racetrack. Whereas Magnussen and Sargent both have 10 second penalties to be incurred if they don't stop again. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Okay, it's, it's for the minor positions, but it's worth bearing bearing that in mind as they cross the line, that penalty will have to be added on. Yeah, if it ends like this uh, for Magnussen, who just got up into 13, with 10 seconds added, it put him uh, around about 16th place. So uh, Magnussen then just trying to uh, perhaps find as much gap time as he can uh, on the medium compound attire to the end of this race. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Stroll and Magnussen are going to fight it out. Stroll's taken the decision to come in and pit and serve that penalty, and Magnussen hasn't. So they're racing each other, but in a very different form than traditionally you would think of. That will play out. Lots of racing going on. It's been a really peculiar Chinese Grand Prix to keep a track of. Ch uh, China returning to the Formula One calendar for the first time since 2019. And it's a sellout crowd as well, supporting the home hero, Joe Guanyu. It's not been the race he would have wanted. Down in 16th position, fighting with Pierre Gasly for 15th, the Alpine and the Sauber wheel to wheel a few seconds between them now actually the Stappen though is the man to beat once again Norris is holding on to second the gap was coming down between Norris and Perez but actually it's just gone back up on that last lap around 4.1 seconds now the gap Norris is actually faster than Perez last time around so Sam McLaren and Norris trying to get second place in this race here and split the Red Bulls it's not an impossibility. Absolutely not. I mean, he's got track position at the moment, but there in the background, you do see that very menacing figure of a Red Bull car behind you. There's still 11 laps to be completed. So look, there's still a lot of time for Perez to close that gap. 
I do hope Lando Norris stays there, though. Again, I'm completely impartial, but I really hope Lando Norris stays there. That's the voice of the McLaren Formula E driver, Sam Bird, alongside myself, Harry Benjamin. Jenny Gao uh, is with us as well. It's lap 46 of the Chinese Grand Prix. Uh, lap 46 of 56. Verstappen leads. Norris trying to split the Red Bulls in second. Perez is hunting him down, though. Leclerc being brought along for the ride a couple of seconds further back and forth. Alonso just pitted, got rid of the soft compound tyres. That's released Carlos Sainz now up into fifth spot. Russell behind in sixth. Piastri in seventh. Hamilton eight, Hulkenberg nine, Ocon currently rounds out the top ten and what is a good race so far for the Alpine team, uh, that uh, on data seems to be the slowest car in the field at the moment, but Alonso on the medium compound tyres, Sam. Four seconds faster than pretty much the entire mid-pack at the moment I see him flying past Ocon and Hulkenberg any second now Yeah, Alonso is 11th at the moment, he's just flown by Alex Albon for that position in the Williams, so Albon now in 13th, then it's Magnussen, Sergeant Gasly, the top 15. Joe and Stroll round out the field. No Ricardo and no Sonoda. A double retirement for RB along with the Sauber of Valtteri Bottas. Just having a look at this track at the moment as well. The tyre wear has been unbelievable and you can see all the marbles off the racing track. Is that going to cause problems for Alonso? He's got so much speed, but those marbles are really slippery. Doesn't look like it, Jenny, because he's just scythed past Esteban Ocon for 10th place, back into World Championship points. How many more can he get, though? Can he get onto the back of the likes of Lewis Hamilton and even Oscar Piastri by the end of the race? 10 laps to go of the Chinese Grand Prix. Formula One cars back in Shanghai. We're about an hour away from the city centre at the Shanghai International Circuit. This live coverage of the Chinese Grand Prix. Round five of the Formula One calendar. It's also been a sprint event, the first of six this year. So that meant the jumbled up weekend format. Only one practice session on Friday before we were straight into qualifying for the sprint race, which took place on Saturday morning. Verstappen won that one out. Uh, then we went qualifying for the Grand Prix. Set the grid, which we are now seeing unfold lap 47 uh, of that Grand Prix and it's Verstappen still leading the way Jenny just listening to Hulkenberg's radio and Haas he's got Alonso right behind him and he's been told don't lose too much time just attack when you let him pass because they know their race isn't with Alonso at the moment yeah, uh, he might well just try and tuck him behind him and see how long he can stay with him and carry him through to hold on to that uh, final points paying position. So crucial for the likes of Nico Hulkenberg and Haas. Uh, this is BBC Radio 5 Live. Live coverage of the Chinese Grand Prix at the moment. But of course, it is London Marathon Day. The wheelchair race has already got underway. And I believe the elite women's race is about to kick off. Ed Harry. Four and a half minutes in, the elite women. Three of the four fastest women in history are in this field. They include the world record holder, Ethiopia. Is Tigis to Safer, who ran two hours, 11 minutes, and 53 seconds to set that record in Berlin last year. In her sights today is the women only world record. That's one set without the use of male pacemakers. It's just over two hours and 17 minutes, set here in London by Kenya's Mary Keitani seven years ago. It feels as though it could be on borrowed time. Uh, thanks, Ed. We will get live updates throughout the day on Five Live uh, with the Elite Women's Race uh, now underway. Uh, back on track for the Chinese Grand Prix. Alonso makes the move into the hairpin. Nice and easy uh, to get P9 from Nico Hulkenberg. As well as London Marathon updates across Five Live today. It's a big day of sport in football. Premier League action underway from 1.30 on Five Live. Everton versus Nottingham Forest. And FA Cup uh, semi-final day once again, 3.30. Coventry City versus Manchester United and then from 5.30 more Premier League action as well Fulham versus Liverpool that's all on 5 Live uh, right now though you are listening to coverage of the Chinese Grand Prix with myself Harry Benjamin alongside me is McLaren Formula E driver uh, Sam Bird and F1 reporter Jenny Gao uh, Verstappen leads this race by almost 10 seconds from the McLaren of Lando Norris who is doing a great job of holding on and keeping a four and a half second gap between himself and the chasing second Red Bull of Sergio Perez then it's the two Ferraris of Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz that round up the top five here is Sainz and, uh, Fernando yeah, to go through traffic might be close to us at the end of the race. 
So that sign's being told that they think Alonso, who is now carving his way through the field, having uh, got a fresh set of medium compound tyres on, might be close to signs in fifth at the end of this race. Where is it at the moment? He's down in ninth. He's 1.1 seconds back from Hamilton, who's in front of him. Uh, so Ferrari think uh, the old Wiley Fox could well challenge fifth spot. But he's 13, sorry, Jen, he's 13 seconds back. I mean, he's going to have to really get a motor on and get past the likes of Hamilton, Piastri and Russell as soon as he gets on the back of them. There can be no dilly-dallying around. He's got to get on with it if he's, if he's going to get to the back of Carlos Sainz. And I think that suits his style. <laughs> well, yeah, Just a little we've bit. definitely seen a, a swashbuckling Spaniard over the years, haven't we? But no one's really prepared to hold him up. No one's out there going, OK, I'll, I'll hold him up. They're just willing to <laughs> get him Everyone's being through. told that Fernando's coming. Oh. As he nearly spins it coming out of the final corner, Fernando Alonso just dipped a wheel into the gravel, pursuing Lewis Hamilton, really nearly spun there. Alonso pushing hard, nearly doing what Carlos Sainz did in the second part of qualifying. Sainz ended up facing backwards on the other side of the track, sideways into the wall. On that occasion, Alonso lives to fight another day and actually looks like he's closed up to the back of Lewis Hamilton. Alonso pushing hard then on the exit of turn two over the crest for turn five, a slight right hand kink Alonso moves to the inside of the right hander of turn six Hamilton sees him coming gives him the room the two former teammates battling it out but Alonso making it look easy and makes the move Alonso now up into eighth position Hamilton down to ninth next up for Alonso 1.2 seconds in front of him and dramatically closing is the second McLaren of Oscar Piastri just worth saying that science is running around on 31 lap old hard tires whereas uh, fernando alonso is on five lap old mediums so the imbalance is massive between the two of them we've just seen an onboard replay of, of alonso coming around the final corner and dipping a wheel into the gravel the rear end fully losing it what a save from alonso yeah what a save fantastic ability there from fernando alonso as we see just Oh, just a wheel really deep into that gravel, really upsetting the rear. But his ability to get... Oh, and he's got past Oscar Already. Piastri. He Piastri is. up into seventh. Uh, Piastri down to eighth. Alonso up into seventh, out of the hairpin. Line that up down the back straight with the aid of DRS. Piastri, we think as well, with damage to that McLaren. Loses that position down into a battle further back in the pack for the home hero, Joe Guan Yu, who gets in front of Logan Sargent. The 15th spot, Joe, now on the soft compound attire. Jenny. And Alonso, looking at the other rest of the field, he's just on, this is a, an amazing strategy from the Aston Martin team. Everyone running around on the hard tires, and they're at least 21 laps older than his tires. I mean, he's just scything through the field. How far up can he get? Well, he's got 11 and a half seconds to gain to get onto the back of George Russell. He's got five and a half laps <laughs> to get there. So that's an awful lot of pace difference between himself and George Russell he's going to have to find. But right now, he's got the tyres underneath him to get that done. The more he pushes, though, Jenny, the hotter those tyres are going to be and the slower his lap times will get as these tyres start to degrade. Norris holding on to second place the gap just under five seconds still between him and Sergio Perez so Norris having a brilliant race to split the Red Bulls as it currently stands Norris is almost 11 seconds back from Max Verstappen who leads this race Norris Perez the top three Leclerc and Sainz the two Ferraris round out the top five Russell is sick with Fernando Alonso who has that fastest lap as well rapidly closing it was 11 and a half seconds the gap it's now less than 10 and a half seconds so Alonso is finding pace lap after lap but as you say Sam the harder he pushes the more li life from the tyres he takes out Alonso 7th, Piastri 8th, Hamilton ninth, Hulkenberg at the moment taking a vital point for Haas in 10th I think 10.2 seconds is probably too much to ask, but let's see. We've got four and a half, five laps to go. I'm so impressed by Lando Norris's drive today. I did not expect to have a McLaren up in second place. I, we, we all just thought that Verstappen and Perez, first and second, easy, but the way the race has panned out with the safety cars has been perfect for McLaren and Norris's strategy, and they've executed it to absolute perfection. We thought Ferrari would be the main challengers. We were wrong. We were. 
just outside of the top 10. Ocon is 11th. Good run. That would be a good result for the Alpine driver. Albon 12th, Magnussen 13th. They both have penalties still to be applied. So does Gasly, oh, Gasly's 14th, I should say, then Joe 15th. Sargent 16th, Stroll the last of the runners with five laps to go in 17th with no Ricardo, no Sonoda and no Bottas all retiring from this race. Jenny. Can I ask another question? So at the Maybe. moment, unsurprisingly, Alonso having switched onto those medium tyres has set the fastest lap. Do you think the staff... What an absolute idiot. Hope that's not about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he was referring uh, to the uh, that was that was Gasly in the Alpine being uh, forced out wide. Uh, I think that was by the it was a few laps ago now uh, by the Williams of Albon. Uh, so uh, Gasly down in 14th, Albon's ahead up in 12th now. Um, so sorry, Jenny, carry on. That's, that's okay. I can breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Do you think Verstappen's got it in him to do the fastest lap as we get towards the end of this race? You have one point is paid out for fastest lap, but only if you finish in the top ten. At the moment, as I say, Alonso has that. I think that given the tire advantage, medium compared to hard, and given how hard Alonso had to push on those opening laps to get the gap. I can't see Verstappen beating the lap time of a 137.8. Uh, mind you, he is lapping 138.4 at the moment comfortably. I'm really not sure, Jenny. I wouldn't put past anything uh, past Max Verstappen. Alonso watch. The gap is now under nine seconds to catch to the back of George Russell on lap 52 of 56. I think he's pushing it if he wants to catch up to the back of Carlos Sainz. Uh, how much life is Alonso taking out of these tyres? Last lap around, Alonso on the medium, a 139.4. Russell ahead, a 143. So he is faster, Alonso still. He has the fastest lap. He'll get an extra point for that as well if he can hold on to it. Uh, to the end of this race and you only get that extra bonus point if you finish within the top 10. It's nice that Fernando Alonso has gone out there and thought, OK, what does this championship need? I know it needs a little of the Fernando Alonso magic. I've just signed a new deal. It's going to keep me in F1 for forever. Um, so he's trying to bring something exciting to this race and, and I think he's doing it well. Yeah, he is. I think he's making the best of a difficult situation. For me, they, they pitted very early for the first pit stop and that put them on the back foot so this is not their preferred strategy they prefer to be racing Sainz Russell um, a little bit more closely with a traditional um, pit stop kind of sequence but look they've made the best of it and he could still be there at the end of the race he's only got two and a half laps to go though if he wants to catch Russell and there is seven and a half eight seconds gap I, I don't see it happening it might be just that little stretch too far for Fernando Alonso as we now get into the closing stages of the Chinese Grand Prix. 1,834 days since we last raced in Shanghai. China back on the calendar this year and next as well. While the gaps may be a little wider at the top end of the field, Pierre Gasly is in the battle for 13th position, fighting with Kevin Magnussen. Dives down the inside onto the right-hander of turn six, makes the move stick. The Alpine in front of the Haas. Magnussen sticking with Gasly, though, through the left-handers of seven, then the right-hander of eight. Magnussen, who has a 10-second time penalty, which will be applied at the end of this race, unless he comes into the pits in these last few moments. He's got Joe now closing in on the back of him as well. Joe flying on the soft compound of tyres. Spurred on by the home crowd. Unfortunately for Salva though, won't look like there are any points on offer for their team this time around with no Valtteri Bottas who retired uh, with suspected engine issues. Yuki Tsunoda in the RB also out of this race after Magnussen made contact with the Japanese driver and also no RB of Daniel Ricciardo who is out after this race after Stroll went into the back of him on the safety car restart. If you can hear the crowds cheering down the back straight, that's because Joe Guan Yu just made up another move in the Sauber, up into 14th now, Magnussen falling off 
in terms of pace. The Haas driver now down to 15th. Joe trying to get a skate on and catch up to the back of Pierre Gasly, who's in front of him in 13th as they make their way into turns one and two. Do you know what? That's so lovely to see. Joe has tried his hardest. He's moved to Sheffield in his time racing. He's then moved to uh, Europe. He's tried his hardest to get into F1, and they didn't come to China when he got into F1, and he thought he might miss that chance. Now he's got it. Let's get Gasly, guys. Come on. Let's get Gasly, guys. Come on, is what Joe Guan Yu says. Joe is a very lovely chap. Everybody has a nice word to say about him up and down the paddock. And actually, as he made the move past Magnussen, he just lost the front uh, left end plate of his front wing on the back of the rear right tyre of Kevin Magnussen's hat as he moved to the right-hand side to have the inside line for the braking zone of the hairpin. I, his front wing looked a little bit off before that. I'm not sure whether in the aerodynamic wake of another car and then he's pulled out of the toe, that pressure on the front wing has just broken it, but it definitely wasn't sitting straight, that end plate in the first place. Don't know, but I don't think there was contact there. Okay, well, uh, Joe did make that move. Now two seconds back from Gasly in 13th. That was the closest battle out on track at the moment. Fernando Alonso, watch once again. The gap between himself and Russell now six and a half seconds. Make that 6.2, but it might be too much. I might have run over a little bit of debris to protect my tyres. All okay for the moment. Verstappen reporting to check his tyres. Last thing he wants is a puncture in the closing stages of this race if he's run over a bit of debris. But John Parra, flat by AC, his engineer reporting that all looks okay on the data. What a run this has been, though, Sam, so far with just one and a half laps to go for Lando Norris in that McLaren. He's kept Sergio Perez at bay. The gap has ebbed and flowed, but it stayed between four to five seconds the whole time. I had shades of Silverstone a few years ago with Lewis Hamilton getting a puncture on the last lap there. With that call from Max Verstappen saying about he ran over some debris. Can you imagine if Max Verstappen had a puncture on this last lap, giving Lando Norris his first ever Grand Prix win? I mean, I, again, I'm impartial. I'm impartial. But anyway, we are on the final lap. And as predicted, Max Verstappen has dominated this race, hasn't he, Harry? He certainly has. But it has been an intriguing race when it comes to strategy. We've had two safety cars, a virtual safety car. And we've had a little bit of jostling towards the back of the pack. We thought the main fight would have been for third place between Norris and Leclerc. But with the safety car intervention, Norris was able to time it right and hold on and get in front of Perez to split the Red Bulls. Didn't quite work out the same for Leclerc, but he's had a good run as well uh, in fourth, considering both the Ferraris started down in sixth and seventh. They are on course for fourth and fifth place as it currently stands. Uh, Russell is six. Alonso has got the gap between himself and George Russell to around about five seconds, but reports on the radio to sign suggesting he may have Alonso for company at the end of this race uh, proved to be that little bit too much of an ask for the Spaniard who has been carving his way through the field once he put on a fresh set of medium compound uh, tyres. He's in front of Piastri, Hamilton and Hulkenberg currently rounding out uh, the point scorers. But what a weekend for Max Verstappen. Imperious, clean and clinical and actually revs the rear tyres up coming out of the final, the penultimate corner, round the final corner for Max Verstappen who crosses the line. The chequered flag awaits him. Verstappen wins the Chinese Grand Prix on the Shanghai International Circuit. It is Verstappen who is victorious by almost 14 seconds. But what a drive from Lando Norris in the McLaren who splits the Red Bulls on the podium. Norris takes second. The flag waits for Perez who rounds out in third. The two Ferraris finishing off the top five and with that it is another win this season and every race that Max Verstappen has finished he has won once again the victor in what was Sam a perfect race we didn't even see him that much no that that seems to be the case on many occasions now Max Verstappen dominant here is radio hold up Max great day's work kept it on your toes nice shot yeah, that was fantastic. It was on fire. The car was uh, really, really good. Um, yeah, fantastic job, guys. Everyone, well done. Great, good stuff. I think we did really, really well this weekend. 
Verstappen on the radio there after his 58th career win. Takes the Chinese Grand Prix, his first win on the Chinese circuit. Verstappen, Norris second, Perez third. Then the two Ferraris, Leclerc and Sainz, the top five. Russell ahead of Alonso in the end, who did take the fastest lap as well. Gets that extra point for Aston Martin in seventh. Piastri eight. Hamilton recovers to P9. And Hulkenberg rounds out the top ten. And that is how your Chinese Grand Prix F1 rounded out the top 10. Max Verstappen again imperious as he proves that he can win on almost any track. The only slight blip, Sam, he didn't get that fastest lap at the end. That stays with Fernando Alonso. He collects that extra one point. Norris's radio. Good effort, mate. B2. <laughs> I told you we would get passed up by the Ferraris. <laughs> Oh, Great race, don't know how, but fantastic. Well deserved, thank you very much. Yeah, well done. I wish I'd uh, shook hands on that bet. <laughs> <laughs> Norris finishing in P2. Whoop, 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 he says. What's been your weirdest celebration when you've won? I think the, la the last time out in Sao Paulo. I can't even remember what I screamed um, when <laughs> I won in Sao Paulo, but there's a lot of screaming on the radio. The... I'm very, very impressed with the way Lando Norris handled that race, uh, adapting his lines to suit the rear tyres. Um, the strategy in the end didn't quite work out for Fernando Alonso, but great recovery. And I told you that Lewis Hamilton would finish ninth. No, Harry that Benjamin. was my prediction. Uh, I think you'll find that 10 seconds before, that was my prediction. You, All you did was copy mine. That, so That, that is... That, no. Where the Valtteri Bottas finish? Well, he didn't. Exactly. No, but I, I called Lewis Hamilton first. People, oh, and Lando. Oh, he's got, instead of going to the grid to line up in P2, he's gone straight on into the pit entry, but he stopped himself and is now trying to find reverse. But the issue is he's got the rest of the field coming in behind him as Verstappen and Perez line up on that P1 and P2 slot on the grid. That'll be okay. He'll be fine. Um, yeah, people that want to rewind the show, if they can, just... I said it before you. Oh, anyway. Norris has ended up going to Park Ferme instead of going to the grid. Uh, it'll be brilliant for the photos. Red Bull get their clear win as Max Verstappen lifts two hands in the air, one finger again, and then in front of the um, Chinese grandstand, he lifts his visor and celebrates his win. And another Red Bull one too. Oh, 1-3, sorry, my mistake. Of course it's a 1-3, but both of them on the podium. You can tell one driver elated with his facial expressions, one driver not. Great, I bet this is a trip to be here as a kid. So thanks for the, all the Chinese fans here and also back home watching TV. And thank you to my team, all you guys. Let's keep working. That, of course, the radio message of Zhou Guanyu, who is delighted to have taken part in his first Formula One race in front of the Chinese fans. And as a mark of respect, they've actually put a sign up and he's driven onto the grid so that all of the fans there can celebrate it. I've never seen that before. But so okay. no, get it, did he? For no, Japan. Um, I think it's nice for but him. I think, you know, being the very first Chinese race yeah. driver, yeah. I think it's a very poignant moment for Formula One. It's huge for Zhou Guan Yu, but also huge for China and and Formula One drivers or aspire, aspiring Formula One drivers out in out in China. Do you hear the crowd in the background? How brilliant is that? I don't think 14th place has ever felt so good for anybody. That I is know. fantastic work. There are so many Joe Guan Yu, uh, uh, almost sort of banners and portraits of himself. Everybody waving and screaming. He's out of the car, and I mean he's such a, a lovely guy, is Joe Guan Yu. In what might be his final season, though, that Salva seat is very much up for grabs. So it's a shame he didn't come away with any points. But just about uh, to ask, what how is he managing to keep that together? I would be in utter he tears. He isn't. Oh. He is. Bless him. Wow. I mean, that has got to be so overwhelming, Sam, for a driver. A huge, huge. I can't even imagine because, you know, he is the first. He's a, in in effect, he's a pioneer for aspiring Chinese racing drivers coming through Zhou Guan Yu take a bow.
And actually, you know what he said in the build-up to this weekend as well. As much as wanting good results, he also is paving the way for the next generation of Chinese talent. So he's doing amazing work. Right, let's throw down to our interviews. It will be um, Perez first. He's chatting to Nico Rosberg, who won this race in 2011. P3 today got unlucky with the strategy there. Uh, was that where you lost it? Yeah, it really cost us uh, quite a bit. Uh, unfortunately, we got the safety car. We lost two places. And uh, yeah, effectively became the race. Uh, we did uh, most of the race on the on the hard. And um, yeah, once you start fighting like that uh, in the early laps, then your your life, the life of the tire just goes goes off dramatically. But uh, at least we managed to to get into the podium. But yeah, it will have been good uh, one and two. What about your pace there during the race? Were you were you satisfied with that, or do you think it could have been better? Like looking at Max, there was sometimes like five tenths even more per lap difference. Yeah, I think we were definitely lacking some some pace, especially on the medium compound. Uh, we did struggle quite a bit with the balance. Uh, we changed a lot from uh, yesterday to today. So I think, uh, yeah, we didn't read the conditions as perfectly as, as we could. But um, overall, I think it was a strong weekend and we understand the reasons why today the, the race pace was a little bit down. Did you started the race today, you're still pushing for the win. So you're going to do that again for next weekend, ne next race out, yeah? Yeah, that will be the target. Good luck. Lando, what an awesome drive that was today. You got driver of the day, well deserved. Thank you. How did it feel out there? Good, yeah. Um, yeah, surprised. So uh, I'm very happy. I'm happy for the whole team. They deserved it. Good pit stops. Uh, just today worked out. I, I don't know why. I really wasn't expecting it uh, to be the kind of race we had today, but got comfortable, can manage the tires a lot, which was um, a much it's a easier task than what I had yesterday. Uh, and I could just push. The car felt great and uh, felt comfortable. So good day, good points, and uh, another podium. So I'm very happy. The race pace was looking, I mean, strong at times. Huh? You were even quicker than, than the second Red Bull there of Sergio. Are you surprised by that? Like, that's really cool to see, no? Uh, I mean... I was surprised by many things. Uh, the, the lack of pace from Ferrari today, uh, our good pace, and I guess more us comparing to the Red Bull, which was so surprising. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just wasn't expecting today at all. I got everything ready to go home early <laughs> and uh, not be on the podium. So it's a pleasant surprise, but um, it shows the team have done a good job. We're working hard and uh, it's paying off. Yeah, so pre-race you were thinking the Ferraris were going to be all over your mirrors, but that yeah, didn't I mean, materialize. Uh, I made a bet to uh, how far behind the Ferrari we would finish today. <laughs> and uh, I thought 35 seconds, and um, I was very wrong by that. So, yeah, um, happy to be wrong with, my, with myself and my own bets. But, uh, yeah, good day for, for everyone. So, All right, thank you very much. And we hope Thanks. you can challenge those Red Bulls very, very soon. Max, congratulations again. What an unbelievable drive. How did it feel out there? Yeah, it felt amazing. I mean, all weekend I think we were incredibly quick. And uh, yeah, it's just enjoyable to drive every single compound as well. The restarts, I think we all survived that well. And yeah, the car was basically on rails. And um, yeah, I could do whatever I wanted to with it. And those kind of weekends are, of course, amazing to, uh, to feel. And, and of course, then to achieve basically what we did this weekend is fantastic. You were worried there at the end, you drove over some debris. Is that what happens, you know, when you're so far out front that you start to hear things and you start to get worried that the car will not make it? I mean, you hear always, you know, noises a little bit. Um, of course, I've had it in, in the past that I've retired quite close to the end. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there was a bit of debris, I think, from a, a car. Uh, so I, I passed it with 300. And you know when the tires are getting cold and old, it's very easy to puncture them. And uh, I just wanted to, to double check. And next race, Miami, are you excited about that? You think you're going to be equally strong there? Yeah, and it should normally be a, a good race for us. It's uh, normally a little bit more straightforward with the, with the strategy, but it's always a quite, let's say, a difficult track, you know. Uh, so I'm excited. You know, it's always quite a crazy weekend there, so it's going to be quite a busy one. All right, thank you very much, Max, and uh, super epic driving out there. Congratulations. So that is your top three of the Formula One Chinese Grand Prix of 2024. The first time back in five years and Max Verstappen winning once again. Of course, Nico Rosberg with the interviews and he won in 2012 for Mercedes. I should know I was on the plane back with him. He was carrying a bunch of flowers and uh, I got a cheeky upgrade, which never happens. And he was he was the race winner 
and was three rows ahead of me in business. And I was like, how is he not in first? I know. I was their reserve driver and I was in economy. Oh, no. So there we go. <laughs> how there did I get an upgrade and you didn't? You don't need the, the legroom. Leg <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> <That's harsh. laughs> right. Just over four minutes until the start of the London Marathon. It's a massive day of sport as well. We're just having replays of Zhou Guan Yu in tears in front of his home crowd. 60,000 was a sellout today in a population of 1.4 billion. It doesn't seem like a, a huge amount of turnout, but this, Harry, will prove the way for more people to want to come, for more people want to try and drive. Absolutely. You know, to, to be the first, uh, he actually released a documentary that he's been filming in the build-up this week called The First, which is all about uh, trying to uh, increase uh, participation at grassroots level into motorsport uh, in the Chinese community. And Joe Guan Yu doing everything he can uh, to, to spearhead the way. Yes, it hasn't led to results, um, uh, but I think that almost is second nature for him this weekend. He finished down in, uh, what was it, 14th, but uh, to be overwhelmed, crying on, on the grid. I mean, it was amazing to see just so uh, emotional as he crossed the line on the radio as well so uh, really uh, becoming a, an ambassador for the sport above and beyond uh, a driver and Sam Bird another dominant display from Verstappen obviously he'll do it again in Miami won't he how do you stop him right now I don't think you can he's the fastest guy in one lap he's talent wise the fastest man on one lap and one of the best in the race he's in amazing form Absolutely right. We need to hand over to Colin Murray. Remember, we will be back in two weeks' time for Miami, which is always a great race. Make sure you come and join us. We've also got the Checkered Flag podcast. You can download that from all the usual places after this show and after we've recorded it. But Colin, hopefully you'll have an amazing start to an amazing day of sport. Well, and, and hopefully not as awkward an end to my show as, as, as you've just had because that was one of the most awkward admittance of an upgrade I've ever heard when you find out the person with you is actually the reserve driver and didn't get one, Jenny. I, you know, sometimes I'm blushing, but that just makes me feel even happier. How <laughs> did I get an upgrade? Ahead of Sam. Who knew? I love it. I love it. You know, you know that that race today reminds me of you know what they used to say. All the all the things would happen. There'd be loads of drama, and then you know they would set your Manchester United's era. You know, of winning everything under Fergie. This happens, and this happens, and this happens, and then Manchester United win. Oh, they said it about Liverpool in the eighties, didn't they? That's what that was a bit like today for you, wasn't it? So much going on, and then for Stappen wins. I know, absolutely. He, he, I mean, he is sublime at the moment, and as you say. In every sport, there's a period of dominance. Look at David Weir in the wheelchair race. Mm. Dominant. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just what happens, but uh, there's there's great racing behind him. Well, really. You set me up perfectly, you know, because, you know, he's, he's 25th consecutive wheelchair race at the London Marathon. The Weirwolf is 25th consecutive today. It's not all about just the glory days of winning everything. That's that that's that's been a little while, but 25 years in a row is is unbelievable at elite level. And you're right, Jenny. That's what's coming your way because not only are we continuing this amazing dev sport on Five Live, which goes from Jenny and the amazing team at the Grand Prix. Thank you guys for all of your work from China today. We then go on to what? Oh my goodness me! The marathon's going on. We're gonna have the winning moments.